They eventually Welcome got... to this interesting conversation. Yeah, and then right. everybody says, Welcome to spitballing. Yeah, right. Welcome, Welcome to an interesting conversation. If you're here, you probably have some explaining to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, basically, welcome to our podcast, an interesting conversation where we cover a wide range of topics, top, topics, topics, man, topics. Okay, from, take two. Yeah. Welcome to an interesting conversation where we cover a wide range of topics from video games, TV shows, movies, and anime. Yeah, no, we're not. Set off those messages, by the way. Stop it. They're just <laughs> disgusting, you bastard. This is okay, but not a hard one. It's the ichthyosis baby only is. <laughs> It looks like a tiny creature from the swamp la- or Black Lagoon. That Swamp Lagoon. That was funny though. It was not. <laughs> it might have been funny from your end, but not from the receiving end. Unscathed thought it was funny. You bastard. Oh man. Wait, did uh, Unscathed get one, or what, did he think it was funny you sent one to me? I sent them all the stuff that you did. Oh, okay. I don't know why he thought it was funny. Then maybe he got. Maybe he just wasn't held as a baby. Yeah, right. And uh, Unscathed was that thing where you poke it in the corner with a stick. Y'all are sick. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what did y'all want to talk about first? <laughs> Take 22. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Let's just start at the top. All right, man. We'll start at the top and work our way to the bottom. Well, Starting okay. off our topics, we're going into movies. And first topic on our movies is trailers. Oh, I think the biggest one that we could talk about really is the Ultron trailers where those are just coming out every couple weeks. Oh yeah, oh. The, the new Avengers movie. Oh, just they keep teasing that movie with all the trailers, like it, uh, it really that, that I think said, I think we you should guys saw the vision at the end of that trailer. No, right? I saw that. Like and just Holy. looks good. Looks much better than I thought it was gonna look. Like every time I, I first saw the trailer, I was like, where is this going? And the more it, I'm like Wait a minute, are they gonna do that? And then it just builds and builds and like... Yep. One thing I don't really get about it though was I watched this video about it. They're talking about how Ultron used to be in the, in the comics and towards the end of it, how... Uh, it showed him in that large metal body with the uh, this kind of skull-like face. That was apparently... Yeah, like, like uh, throughout the movie he, he evolves. Yeah. From different appearance to different appearance to different One appearance. One thing I didn't really get about that was just... He, uh, according to the comics, that was his full bri- vibranium body, like the same stuff that Shil- uh, Captain America shields me. Uh, yes, that's what he makes it. Although, it just brings question: Where the fuck did he find it? You know, it's so probably like a, a Tony Stark thing. Like his his father? No, not his father. I I don't think so. What I think is because this movie's supposed to have a couple of setup sequences for the Black Panther. And as you know, the Black Panther, you know, uh, Wakanda, they have all the vibranium and stuff like that. And so I believe uh, there's been a couple of shots where it's almost like desert looking stuff. But there are mountains yeah. and hills and stuff. I think that's Africa. And for, uh, for whatever reason, I think the movie takes them to Wakanda. So you know what it might be like? Ultron might, like, at one point, where he's going to gain a lot of his power. So it might just span across the world like an event where um, they, Iron Man's chasing him down. And, and, or globe yeah, sure. so like. It'll probably be like a thing where S.H.I.E.L.D. and the rest of the Avengers are going to follow Iron Man and whoever else can fly at the time and against you know, Ultron. Because Iron Man and, and um, Captain America are going to go at it in this movie at one point, you know. So there's going to be yeah, some you mild... You don't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., do you? I don't watch okay, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Finish, finish it and then I have something that's to TV tell you shows. about that's S.H.I.E.L.D. A, that's TV shows, man. That's another discussion. I know, but this one directly ties into Okay, Marvel. okay. Okay. Go ahead. Huge spoilers if you haven't seen last night's S.H.I.E.L.D. Um... One of Us was the episode title. Uh, apparently there are two shields in a- activated right now. Uh, the one that uh, Coulson is leading in the uh, TV show, it's the main focus, but also uh, the Mockingbird from the TV show, Bobby Morse. Uh, she and uh, Mac, the other guy, uh, have been uh, kind of had like a secret going on for the past 10, 10, 15 episodes, something like that, almost since the beginning of the season. And um, no one knew where it was going, no one knew where it was going, except last week it came to a head where it was like, okay, they have to explain something now. Okay. And uh, they did at, in like the last, I think like five minutes or so of uh, last night's episode of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, they explained that they're working for S.H.I.E.L.D. The real S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> that was like, that's a direct quote. Um, and so uh, it's basically S.H.I.E.L.D. It just has a slightly different logo, and so I have no fucking clue. I think... Nick Fury is behind that again this yeah. season. It sucks, but um, basically, as he's 
you know, passed off the reins to Coulson, but not really. It's like he's running the real shield, and it's been super, super black ops. Yeah, because the, the events that happened in Captain America 2 and exactly. everything, and so... And so I, I, f- I feel like shield is going to be in it, but I don't think the Avengers are going to reunite with Coulson. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, that's my thing, is I definitely think shield is involved, but not the shield we know in the TV show. A different, darker, we don't know who is running it, shield. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anything to drop on that? Uh, honestly, when they talk about all these, uh, when you talk about Shield in general, it's just kind of odd how it's this government agency that doesn't that's more secret than uh, more secret than most of the stuff that you ever hear about or even think, you know. And it's just it's kind of odd that now there's a subsection of that or a hidden layer of that. It's just constantly either going for that iceberg effect, you know. Where there's this thing, but no, there's actually something below it. Yeah, you know, yeah. you don't know what you're missing, but there's something there. And I know, like with the with the with the Avengers trailers, they haven't fully said this yet. I know, but I'm really I'm hoping they introduce either Spider Man or Deadpool. Like I I want a Deadpool or Spider Man teaser, but doesn't at the isn't end. Deadpool owned by Fox though? No, like he's he's, a, he's gonna be used by Marvel. I thought that I thought. Marvel was going to make a Deadpool movie, but it was going to be PG thirteen for some weird reason. Yeah, but I thought uh, it wasn't um, it wasn't Marvel Studios. It was Twentieth Century Fox. I thought because even the Ryan Reynolds version from the shitty X Men movie yeah. that was Twentieth Century. I think so. I don't know who owns the rights. I, I thought Marvel bought the rights back because after the events of Origins, Maybe. they were like, "You fucked it up." Like you can have him back. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I hope that like what happens is like maybe. The, at the end, it, nothing happens for a good while, and the Deadpool goes out mid credits, like whoa, whoa, you forgot my intro, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or some, just something like so, like he's in the background. Yeah, I would like I, to at least see like uh, some kind of a or like his original a, name after credit scene, like some yeah. of something like that, either him or Spider Man or something, like even just like a spider going down and landing on somebody's neck. I would be thrilled with that. Just yeah. that. Well, Don't give me anything uh, else. Well, now uh, Sony is now talking to Marvel and saying, "We really, we don't know where to go with Spider-Man. Can you please just take him, kind of take the reins of yeah. us? We still want to be there. We want to be a part of this, but we want you to kind of give us the guidelines. What can we do? What can we do? Because like at that point, they nearly Spider-Man three the second movie. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh man! They like got. The second movie had so much right with it, though. That's the that's the frustrating part is they had just taken like another year. Yeah, that could have been a good Spider-Man. Or like movie. backed off on the villains a little bit. Like I don't think they needed Rhino. At Absolutely, all. he served zero purpose. Yeah, set up the Sinister Six. That was it. Yeah, pretty much. Like maybe if he just showed up at the very end, like just in prison, then they show up like we're looking. You you looking for work or something like that? Yeah, and they give him the Rhino suit, and he's just like. Yeah, on yeah. with the uh, when it comes to the villains, that whole bit with the Green Goblin just seemed, or well, technically he was the Hobgoblin. Technically, technically, yeah. But it, it was really it felt forced to me. Like they're trying to say, no, yeah. I mean, it's like which sucks I'm your because, best friend, um, I want to help you. Garfield out. and Dahan's scenes in that movie were one of my favorite parts. There was just an inherent awkwardness, like these two best friends who, who just, just haven't seen each, each other, and, and it was like it could it could have been honestly like, two movies like. It should have been Hobgoblin part first, one, part two. then the uh, then Electro in the other second. Like they could they could have built Electro up in this one, and then second movie it's all his. Yeah. he was awesome. I thought like the way they showed him like that effect where he drained the city and yeah. just shot electricity everywhere. And as bad as the third Raimi movie was, it was pretty cool seeing Spider Man and Hobgoblin fighting Sandman at the end. Yeah, it was pretty dope. That was a neat little scene. As yeah. much as he Deus Ex Machina killed. Yeah. Like, Half Goblin. Oh my god. And um, as long as we're speaking of uh, Marvel trailers, I really like to mention the Ant Man trailer. Because, like, I went to the theaters recently and um, I saw that Ant Man trailer and, like, I'm thinking it might be cool, but, like, there's not. It's, the trailer's not giving me much. Yeah, they, like, I, and I'm not sure. Like, there's got to be a reason for that. Like, uh,. Yeah, you know, sometimes there's a movie and you think it's going to be like this, and then you go and see it. It's nothing like what the trailer yeah. was describing. I think that's what that was. Because one of the earlier concepts, what they were saying was like, we want to make like a Marvel heist movie. And yeah, I was well, like, 
I have never, my attention. I never got really weird. Is that with Ant-Man, it was... Just, they tried to do so many things. They wanted it to be one thing, but then they wanted to go into an origin story. But then they, they knew that if they tried an origin story, then it would just start to be, okay, well, you didn't establish this. What about this guy? Who was this person? You should have put this character in here. Because there's so many fans that you can't just say, we're going to redo everything. You have to say, this is the universe, and this is how it's going to run. Yeah, and a lot of other places just screw that up. I think with as little as they're showing in the trailer, it might just be like they're kind of throwing you the entire beginning, which is probably going to be like 10 minutes before he even realizes he's going to become Ant-Man. Yeah, and then it's going to be like... You see a lot then, going down in that yeah. trailer. Like, he, he's being arrested for some reason in the street. Uh, I mean, there's just like, shit That's like down. 10, 15 minutes, the first part of the movie, and then they're showing you like two seconds of the ending. And <sighs> that whole thing where he flew on that bug, I was like, okay, that's a little cool. And yeah, then the whole thing where he shrunk good. down, it's like, okay, that's really cool. But I'm thinking, who's the villain going to be? Like, who's Ant-Man's foe in this movie? Because they didn't show anybody. Like, they yeah, didn't well, show... Well, um, it's, it's Yellow Jacket. Car- and Corey Stoll is going to be playing. I don't know if you know who that I is. I didn't... Uh, he's, uh, he's a bald guy. Uh, he's, he's a very, very good actor. Very talented. Um, he was in House of Cards the first season. Oh, okay. Uh, he played uh, Senator... Peter something, I can't remember, or something like that, um, and uh, he was very, very good in that, but he's been in a bunch of stuff, and, um, oh, like, uh, he's been in The Strain more recently, he was okay. in The Strain, and um, so he's going to be playing Yellow Jacket, and it's basically like Ant-Man, but he's black and yellow and has, like, four extra mechanical arms, and it's, like, it's, it's, it's interesting. Okay, that'll... I'm going to see where they go with this. Just yeah, or not. Uh, mechanical arms makes it sound like more like Doctor Octopus. It's like a uh, you know bug arms. You know, yeah, like that. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Honestly, when you got when you just talk about Marvel super villains, it's there's so many changes in the lore and so many alternate versions of things, and it just gets really weird. Like uh, I tried reading some stuff about Spider Man and Doc Ock, and like my, uh, it felt like my head was going to explode because there's just so many different things. Like at one point. There was a comic where Doc Ock apparently possessed Spider-Man's body. Oh, him. Superior Spider-Man. Yeah, and then he ended up with the like four uh, spider arm things. That was actually really cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a really good book. If not, a, a little confusing because you need a little bit of background before you start it. Yeah. But uh, definitely, definitely a really good read. And even right now, Marvel's kind of, they're pushing their thing. <coughs> like they're, they're pushing three Marvel movies right now, like... Avengers 2, Ant-Man, and then they're pushing a Fantastic Four later this year. Um, I don't know what to think of a Fantastic Four. Like, it seems incredible. Well, I mean, because uh, Fox owns that one, too, so I mean, yeah. there's also been lots of rumors of an X-Men and Fantastic Four crossover movie in coming yeah. years or something. They're probably going to awesome. do that. Like, um, Actually, oh my it God. seems like when they're rebo- re- rebooting it, it's going to be like a little more gritty. Like, and I really do like the cast of actors they got oh, to play these yeah. guys. Like, and the special effects I saw that while there's not much of them, like, they looked really cool. Um, like when the guy, when Johnny uh, just burst into flames in that first, and oh, the man. thing bursted out of that boulder from himself. That was yeah, because in, in the comics, it's they're making it much more like the uh, Ultimate comics, okay. where it's uh, transmutation has a lot to do with it. And I don't know if you watch uh, Flash, but they've been deal- dealing with a little bit of that on Firestorm. Or as far as Ultimate and, comics, uh, I've only seen the style of Ultimate Spider-Man Boys, really. and everything like that. Firestorm section was really good. Was really interesting episode, just especially how they established what happened and how they brought in this new character who could yeah. uh, is going to start kind of bringing more to the story, just explaining how certain things are possible. And we'll go we'll go deeper into that in our TV section when we start yeah. talking about right. Arrow and the Flash and all the CW universe things going on. Oh my God, my Arrow is all Arrow and <laughs> tonight, <laughs> dude. I literally have to wait. Like I think it's I, I have to wait. F- Four hours. I need to wait four hours. Honestly, I can make like, it. Honestly, the most irritating part about where we live, and kind of the good part about where we live, is just the fact that there are people on the East Coast who see it six hours before us, and then we get there's already reviews, so you have to stay away from certain websites. Otherwise, they'll just go, this person died. Oh, you motherfucker! Yeah. yeah, right. Just like even like if you're just browsing the internet, immediately something's on YouTube or something's on. Uh, I can't and search and explore and just, when it's like that because or like, Twitter. It's like, like in episode one, I saw a post that said "R.I.P. Sarah," and I was like. You mother... F- yeah. Oh! Like, just, it was insane. I was like, no. Like, some of these stuff, I don't watch no. Twitter. I don't, like, watch TV, but I have a Twitter account. So, when I go on my Twitter, to like, I want to tweet something, I get, like, oh, this thing God, happened yeah. on this show. I'm like, no. no and then I go, away I don't watch the shows you guys watch. Like, yeah. recently, the shows I've been watching... Where I get the TV shows, but I've been watching Bates Motel and Better Call Saul. That's the newest stuff I've been watching. I stopped Better Call Saul after the pilot. 
Sorry. I, I've I been just, watching. It, it couldn't say, I don't know. It just it wasn't resonating with me. Don't get, me, don't get me wrong. I'm going to watch it all the way through once it gets on Netflix. Okay. But, yeah. All right. So, um, the other trailers. What else seemed interesting, actually? Like I saw a really... What's up? Actually, recent, I, I saw, saw a really I just, cool one. I just saw a trailer this morning, oh, and I got to bring it up actually. because it seems ridiculous to me. It's called Pixels. You ever seen that? Yes, show? that Adam Sandler movie. It's got uh, it's got uh, Donkey Jerry Kong, Lancer, Peter, Peter Dinklage. That's yeah. his name. It's got yeah. Um, the the movie is basically like back in the eighties. They send out a contact to aliens, and they showed a bunch of videos of our culture in the eighties, and some of that culture was video games, of course. So the whole thing is the aliens came to Earth, and they thought it was a it was a pro, uh, proclaim of war. So the aliens come down with all these converted versions of our video game characters: Pac Man, Donkey Kong, Centipede, to destroy us. I and think like, I saw that episode of Futurama. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they basically took it when they got the Fry in the RV. Yeah, they went down the Space Invaders. That's the exact same thing. And they even got like, um, and I was like, this movie could be cool. But then I see Adam Sandler in it, and I'm like, this guy hasn't made a great movie in a while. He's like, he's put out some good stuff and occasionally, but not as much as he's pulled out his crap, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm just hoping this movie rides on the nostalgia of video games and actually does something really interesting. I like, really hope a so. Really, a really fun scene I saw. Wasn't Kevin Smith supposed to be in that yes, movie? Yes, I saw the trailer. He's, he's in, in it. it. Yes. Like, he's, he's held... I saw him, like, and fighting so Donkey that, that, Kong, That man. means Rob Schneider is somewhere in it. Maybe it's Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah, like, he'll do the voice. And, um... One funny thing, they actually got the creator of Pac-Man in the movie to look to talk to Pac-Man. What? Yeah, it's like, That's cool. He looks at me like, Pac-Man is not evil. I shall show you. And he goes up to Pac-Man... You really go and bites his hand. Somebody kill this thing! Oh my god! Just, they start cutting down Pac Man. It's like, oh my I'm god. I'm definitely gonna have does to watch Pac-Man that. Do, does Pac Man do the thing where he recedes? Um, I didn't see him get killed or anything. I just saw him go waka 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 down. He is huge too. He's like, he's a few stories high, so. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Have you ever seen a GIF of, uh, of Pac Man uh, where he's making fun of the fact that it, it shows like uh, this ghost running around and he bumps into Pac Man and then. He starts yelling at Pac-Man, all of a sudden uh, Pac-Man just starts sucking himself in through his, like, <laughs> flow. Have you seen that one? Jesus. Have you seen that one, Jansen? No, I have not. That's you gotta, gotta check that out. I have my bar or your laptop open. Check that out while you guys talk about the next topic. And uh, I saw a trailer for a movie recently. It's called The Deadlands. I was Michael Bar or your laptop. Nah, it's, uh, we'll, we'll go into them. Let me just... And, uh... Um, I think it froze. It's a movie from New Zealand uh, about, um... I, I, I guess it's supposed to take place, um... Like one or two hundred years ago, something like that, and yeah. it's about a, a, a Maori tribe, and um, uh, this kid is Maori. like a uh, Maori. Maori is that what it is? Maori. Oh, whatever. We have a guy. We know a guy from New Zealand. We should. Not whatever. I've never said. I've never said the word Maori to him. Whatever. Um, Just, okay. What was your thing? Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, it, it's it's this crazy looking movie, and uh, it's basically about like. Um, this young man or this kid or whatever you want to call him, um, he like uh, he's like going to get water or hunting or something, but he's like out of his village, and uh, this rival village comes and destroys his um, entire village and like kills his entire family and all his neighbors and his friends and shit. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's a revenge story at its at its base, but it looks really really dope. And what really draws me to it is like um, well, the trailer was really well paced and it looked really really dope, but. Uh, it's got like Quentin Tarantino level violence in it. Like, y- like you chop something off and you got a garden hose of blood. It looks it looks amazing. It's very 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 cool. Okay, I always thought I remember this trailer. I don't know if you guys ever remember. There was a trailer that came out. I think it was last year or earlier the year or late the year before. It was a horror movie, and it was directed by um, who is the guy that directed Cabin Fever? Um, oh, f- <laughs> I have no idea. Hostel. Hostel. Eli Roth. Eli Roth. He directed this movie, and it was like called um, Green Green Inferno. Green Inferno. Green Inferno. Inferno with, uh, with the cannibals and stuff. Yeah. I think that only came out like not even six months ago. Yeah, because I remember seeing shows. I never heard nothing after that. Like I, I think that got pulled by the studio for a while actually because um, they, I, I don't know, like some kind of incident where people actually got eaten or something like that, and so they were like, "Yeah, it's kind of insensitive to release a horror movie about cannibals right now. We'll wait a we'll wait a little while or something like okay. that. Just like some shit goes down every once in a while, you know." And uh, well, yeah. I'm actually gonna look that up and see what the status okay. is on that because I thought that came out a few months ago, or at least like a DVD release or something. Okay, 
But yeah, anyway, um, what else? New trail. Um, other recent stuff coming out, uh, would be. <laughs> just play that. Actually, uh, I just want to talk about this. There's a few movies that looked interesting. Uh, well, at least to me. I mean, there's Zombievers that just looked yeah. like some freaking layers. I, I saw the trailer for Zombievers. That that shit looks just like the kind of shit that I would get into. Like, we were both get into that stupid, just this so bad. Summer, there's a new type of zombie. Beavers. Yeah, the next evolution of zombies. Beavers. And the whole trailer just looks so <laughs> what the funny. Hell? Like, um, it shows um these really hot chicks, because of course they're really hot, go out to a cabin in the woods, of course, and um, they just find this dam. They're like, hey, we want to go see the beavers in the dam. And what then the fuck? One thing leads to another, and of course, zombie beavers are attacking the entire colony of people. It's like, what did you expect? Yeah, and the funniest From thing the is... people that brought some, you Sharknado. Some of these... Some of these fucking things are hilarious to me. Oh like God. one of the tri- one of the scenes was like a beaver is coming at this chick, and her legs are like spread wide open, and it's coming at her. It's like, oh my God, no! Wait, is wait, a beaver wait, about wait, to be eat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta bring this up. Okay. Well, there is a Shark Nose three, and they did just release. I can't title. remember what the title was. It's something like oh, the Revengeing. No, like No Way Back or something like. It's something stupid. Shark Nose oh, three wow. Turbo Twisters. <laughs> no, I was on IGN. Yeah, it was I'll like a Shark oh. Nano Three. Please no more. With like a question mark. It was funny. Oh yeah, and of course, um, two of the other big trailers, like or big, um, I guess would count as like revivals or reboots or sequels or whatever. Would be the next Jurassic Park and the next Terminator. Oh, that are of course coming oh, out. Both look really, really yeah. good. Like the fact that. Terminator, well, I guess we'll talk about Terminator first, then we'll leave the Jurassic Park. Cause there's a lot yeah, more, Jurassic Park's going to take too long. There's yeah. a lot more happening with Jurassic Park, I think, and what people are talking about. like ter- With Terminator... It's a little more straightforward. It's a little more straightforward. It's, it's, it's a pre-sequel, reboot, sequel... It's X-Men Days of Future Past. Hey, it's, it's, a, it's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> they're basically like, they saw X-Men Days of Future Past and they're like, this is a good idea. We should do exactly what these guys are doing. But with Terminators... Pretty much. Pretty much. Because um, that... That whole the fact that they brought Arnold back, first of all, just okay, you got me. I'm going to watch this movie. And the way they brought him back was yeah. really cool. Because um, he plays, um, uh, and the woman who plays uh, Sarah Connor now is uh, Amelia Clark, who plays, um, of course, uh, the Khaleesi on uh, Game of Thrones, and she's an, uh, she's a pretty good actress. Yeah, she's, she's very hot though, um, which totally makes title. her a good actress. It is now called Oh Hell No. Oh, hell no! Yeah. That's right, that's right. It's and, something um, ridiculous. Um, and so, um, basically, Arnold plays her, like, stepfather, I guess is what it is. I get, like, her guardian angel yeah. that came out of nowhere. Yeah, basically, like, like for some no, reason, wait. like, uh, he's it's... living in her house, like, wait, wait, uh, wait, instead of Sarah Connor. Got... The door. Maybe they're going to do a Pacific Rim style, where he just appears out of fucking nowhere, d- takes out whatever is threatening her, and then stands in the glory of the sunlight. Like what if it's like Idris what if Elba. <laughs> what if it's like another like a regular uh, T eight eight fifty or whatever like a non skin T eight fifty just comes at her and he just appears out of nowhere, bam yeah and then Idris like because that whole thing where he kills himself in the movie like I've been waiting for you pop 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 yeah that would be pretty dope oh, oh man, that would actually be pretty good I mean considering I mean he dies or kills himself in every single Terminator yeah. movie. It's basically a recurring element. And you know, point. the way he's nearly going to kill himself is that helicopter scene they showed in the end of the trailer. Oh. Like, we, where he's just like, I'll be back. Like, and he jumps out of a helicopter and then through another helicopter. And then what I assume, but I haven't seen the movie, is another seven helicopters waiting to be crashed through <laughs> by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and he's like, I'll be right back. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, you know what? And they just meet him at the ground as um, debris is falling from from the sky with legs and stuff. And, like, um, that liquid, that super liquid-throwing metal Terminator, he's supposed to be in this movie. Not the same actor, but that Terminator is supposed to be in this movie because this movie is basically, like, you go back in time, and it's, like, a mashup of all three movies, or four movies, technically. Oh, Um, yeah. And it's... They've yeah. kind of given him new techniques, though, because the ability for him to chop and throw his metal, which is pretty dope, never happened before. So I'm wondering, what did they, tr- what happened? Like, you know, because the whole There's butterfly effect and better, everything. Better special effects budget this time around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically all it is. Yeah, pretty much. Just, it was like James Cameron blew his load on the on the on the thumbs up scene. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it'd be kind of interesting if it ends up where they're. 
while they're all crashing through whatever area, and this all of a sudden you just see the guy from the what was it, Terminator Salvation? Okay, where he just sleeping on the freaking table. Oh god, <laughs> there he is. I, it would have been funny of James Cameron to just Terminators instead of Terminator Two Judgment Day. Just take the aliens or just Terminator. Also, yeah, no, uh, he would do that too. Like, no, of, I think that would have been a much better movie. Instead, instead of Avatar, it's Avatars. Uh, and then the third one, of course, because it's retarded by that point, Avatars. <laughs> Actually, I, how many. Uh, when is the Avatar 2 movie? Even I think it's coming out? next year. But the, the thing is, is though, I mean, you guys know about this, right? This what? big production thing. It's like um, what happened was. is he got all these writers together. I can't remember who they are. They're pretty notable names, though. And yeah. So basically, he got all these writers together and like got them together for a couple of months and outdid it and like went out across the entire trilogy. Because I, I mean, it's it's Avatar, but then there's supposed to be two, three, and four coming out, and that's a trilogy. Avatar is just like the setup movie. Yeah. And so he wanted all the writers to be equally invested in the story itself, rather than just their movies that they will be taking care of. And so lays out the entire story, and then he uh, mystery assigns uh, which movie to which writers and stuff like that. And then they wrote all of it, and now they have three movies of scripts that are most likely like this big, like fucking yeah, Titanic. Because it's gonna be this. It's gonna be one. fucking three hours long. It's for the each blue one. Titanic, pretty much at yeah. this point. And um, then what he wants to do is he wants to have a mega film production where he films all three movies back to back. Actually, that's See the whole thing. I just don't. I don't. Think he, I don't think that's feasible. Actually, uh, the one thing I know James Cameron can do, he can do action movies, no problem. So that's that's I why. I don't know if he can do three action movies no, in like, a row, though. I know he can do action. That's why I enjoyed Avatar so much because the action sequences. I didn't like. I didn't care for the romance. I'm not gonna lie. I liked the action straight up. That's all I watched. It. Actually, those are and, um, weird too. Uh, that's where I'm wondering, like, are the humans gonna come back? Is the alien culture gonna be explored a little bit more? Or he, he, he said you do definitely learn about you know more about Pandora and stuff like that. I don't know too much about any of the rest of the stuff involving the humans or anything like that. Well, so, I, what were you saying, Ken? This is what gets really odd to me. Where, I mean, Avatar. The whole thing about it is like there are people who traverse the skies, traverse the land. They can do all kinds of different things. Just like I mean, how they had those floating rock island things. Or yeah. Whatever. And then now, what's up with that? Well, well, wait, just, just, does gravity not apply to them? It's like sure, that's something like <laughs> Final Fantasy or DBZ world, like just. I don't know. Or not even next to DBZ. That's too weird. Floating Actually, island. No, wait, here's where it's even weird, though. I mean, they, Peter Pan. They did all kinds of different stuff. Yeah. And then uh, now James Cameron bought a mini sub or something. Yeah. And now he's going to the bottom of the ocean. I mean, the. Yeah. Well, they're, how they're, how the, the Marianas Trent. How trench. the hell are they going to explain that apparently now these people who ride horses and. All these other birds and whatever the hell are going to go underwater. Have you seen the trailer for the new Peter Pan movie? Like, there is an Origins Peter Pan movie coming out. Oh, dear God. With Hugh Jackman and Blackbeard. Pan, yeah. yeah. Pan. And, like, it's supposed to be. You know like, what? I'm holding became... out my reservations because I actually like I like Peter Pan, so you know, I think that yeah. could be okay. I, the last Peter Pan movie I saw was the actual, like, the reboot Origins thing where... Oh, see, for me... The live-action one? I've only ever seen two Peter Pan movies. I saw the original Disney, and and then I saw Hook. Yeah. Oh, that was the little problem. Yeah. Yeah, Hook. Yeah, well, um, this one was just called Peter Pan, and I assume... I've I've heard about that one. It was an attempt to make it more realistic or more dark. Dark. I don't think so. No, dark is the term. Yeah. Um, It's more gritty. It's grittier, yeah, because the mermaids in it, they're dark, they'll drown you and shit, and there's murder that's trying to be attempted here... It was weird. Like, I see where they were trying to go with it, but the ending was just, uh uh-uh. Like, the whole, you don't mind if I tell you, right? Like, okay, the whole thing is... watch that movie for sure. Yeah, the whole thing is where... Wait, wait, are you talking about the movie or Neverland? The movie. Oh, okay, because there was a miniseries that came out called Neverland. No, the movie. Okay, 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 go ahead. Like, the whole thing is Hook somehow got the pixie dust and started flying, fighting Peter Pan... And then they start discouraging his belief in fairies and flying, and he falls right into the gator's mouth. Like, and, and he, he just, just like spends the rest of the he just accepts like, it too, just hugging the gallbladder of the Actually, gator. Like, <laughs> he's like, you know, don't believe, don't believe. He's like, to believe and just lets go and dies. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing, movie? Actually, you know, that just makes me wonder. Huh. The whole thing about it was that you get the fairy dust, fine, you can fly slightly, but to control you need to think happy thoughts or something, right? Yeah. Well, I'm pretty so, sure the fairy dust is just like golden cocaine, right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all sure about that, right? I just wonder about how... <laughs> I just gonna wonder, is happy subjective to where, or relative, just like, do you... 
Is it what you find happy, or is it literally you like the thing? I find power. murder happy. <laughs> why didn't they give any fairy dust to the dog? Because I think a yeah. dog that's flying like, oh like God. that would be funny as hell. Yeah. I. I why did they give the gator? This. Why did they give the gator fairy dust? That thing would kill Hook. I was actually trying to avoid that because of the fact that there was. It's that. like think about killing Hook. Actually, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I actually couldn't. I was trying to not think about that because of this robot chicken sketch that they did. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That was just fucking terrible. What? Um, it, the, uh, this fairy sprinkled some of the dust on top of the dog, and the dog was on a leash. And, was and it choked himself. <laughs> that's what's like Oh, my God! Um, that's why I was trying to think about it. <laughs> and um, I guess... Well, you got it, kids. Don't give your dogs cocaine, otherwise they'll choke themselves. I guess for the last trail we'll bring up is the Jurassic Park one. Because we've been going for half an hour right now, so we got to bring up one more trailer. Honestly, the... I understand that they want to get something entertaining, but just the idea of a Tyrannosaurus Rex mixed with a raptor, mixed with a cuttlefish, mixed with a... But that was awesome. Uh, what was it? Uh, it? It's a kind of lizard that has a uh, self-defense function that basically... It's like, it's basically... It works a lot like a chameleon does. No, no, that's where, a cuttlefish. Uh, that's a cuttlefish. Really? I thought it was from no, two different ones. What's it? Because it's supposed to have... Uh, like some kind of dual layered stealth thing. Like I'm not sure what it is. Like uh, I thought it was just a cuttlefish. Mm. See, I, I, just uh, think, I could be wrong. I just think like the whole idea is like we're we know that two and three weren't exactly the best movies we could have given you. So we're gonna go back to the island concept. We're gonna go back to the theme but part. I liked, I liked two. I really did. It wasn't anywhere near I as just, good as the book. I but. thought two was just like it's ham. It's ham message. Just like. You're the, mo- the humans are the monsters, not the fucking dinosaurs. Oh my god! The only thing environmental protection bullshit. Two. I hated that. Like there was even that scene where the dude like he took the guy's ammo when he was about to shoot the T Rex. Like, are you fucking kidding me? How many people died because of you? Yeah, no shit, dude. But um, yeah, you you haven't read any of the books, have you? I haven't read any of the Michael Crichton books. I kind of want to read the first one just to see the difference because I know I, 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 I read know, that book like twice a year. It I know the Michael Crichton book. book is so different from the first movie, but I know Michael Crichton helped write the book oh with Steven Spiel, write the screenplay with Steven Spielberg. Yeah. So it's all good. Yeah, well, it's all good. I just want to know how. I just want to see the moment where they go. Yeah, we're gonna mix this. We're gonna put a cuttlefish. Raptor and yeah. the other side of the ship. Actually, that would be a cool thing if, like, in the beginning, they just kind of show them making the thing, yeah. and then it goes. Then it opens like that. That, that, has be, like, that has to be like the opening sequence with the credits and everything is the now, DNA. Well, I just want to see the moment where they go. That's a great idea. I mean, if I was their boss, I'd beat them to death with a stick. It's probably well. They said it was like because like not a lot of people well, are coming I mean, to Dinosaur that Island. Point in time <laughs> where you have DNA geneticists and stuff and like that. This is supposed to be a reasonable kill difference. Like it's almost ten years in the future, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. but you're going um, to make something that can kill you. Yeah, but they're they're. There's that, it's that whole Frankenstein. I'm gonna like, play God concept. This is almost like what if Jurassic Park didn't go wrong, sort of. And so it's a little safer now. They've kind of fallen into like a false sense of security and stuff. But what I was saying about the books was the reason that pisses me off is because you remember when uh, Ian uh, or Goldblum was yeah cool yeah you remember when he was uh, messed up by the T Rex and like he was almost gonna die in the movie. Yeah. In the book, he did die. Okay. Which still doesn't explain why he was the lead character of the second book. You know why? <laughs> like, you know why? Because they couldn't get the others back. It like, hey, it's a book! You don't have to write! It's a book! <laughs> so I just have no idea, and he's never okay. explained it. Well, as, it and, turns uh, out, as it turns out, he's one of those genetically modified clones. Yeah, he, he, they, they cloned... <laughs> More Jeff Goldblum in the world, people. Oh, um, yeah. We need, we need we need more of this and and looking at and, and, and like I'm going to do the water and, uh, on uh, my hand uh, and, and it, but, it goes but, this side, but but but, but 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 on uh checkmate. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I guess I guess we're just getting out of the car. I get uh, yeah. Uh, we need uh, hello um. <laughs> but um, it's just as far as anticipated. I'm just like excited for this movie. Oh, I don't yeah. expect it to be anything more than just an entertaining popcorn dinosaur flick. Nothing That's more to really be because I mean, just the very how are you going to justify people who are apparently this fucking stupid to make something that can kill every single one of them? We've kind of accepted that though in smarter movies. Yeah, we really, we really have. have. Like we've accepted idi- idiocracy in other movies that tried to be so much smarter, and then they did one little thing, and you're like, wait a minute. Why? At least with those, they were trying to make a joke out of it. This seems like they're trying to say it's a really serious movie. Kind of like the movie Purge, when they said this could really happen. When in reality, that could never ever happen. 
I ever. I, so, and, and what's funny is I talk to friends at work, and they're like, no, that really could happen. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like, okay, then you're fired. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> it's my boss. What's funny about no. it? No! <laughs> I, I talk to my boss about the purge, and they're like, this could really happen. And it's I'm, like, I keep telling them, like, I'm just saying, you got it, I'm boss. Like, look, this is, it's kind of an interesting idea, and they could have done so much more with it, but it could never really happen. He's like, I mean, it's an interesting idea for a horror movie, don't get me wrong. Not just a just... horror movie, but it could have been, like, a cool satire. Yeah. Like, just, uh, it could have been a dark comedy at some points, like... Like Shaun of the Dead? Kind of like Shaun of the Dead, yeah. Actually, it should have been like that, because it's just a better idea. I heard the second one's better, though. Uh, I didn't watch it. I didn't like Just because it was one. taking place in the city, everyone was like, this is a little better. Yeah, just had a little bit uh, more scale to it, rather than literally two houses where it was filled. It's and, like, oh my God. And 20 minutes of just nothing happening. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, like the opening 10 minutes was, was dope. Like, seeing all the preparations and like... Like, now there's, like, technologies and companies built toward yeah. making your house impenetrable. <laughs> and I gotta, it's like, why haven't we done that already? I no, do gotta no, get no, on no. that movie, wait, though, because, like, um, there was the whole thing with the, it's rich, worth at least one with the rich people auction. They were auctioning up people to kill. No, no, the, like, there's, uh, uh, there's something you guys are overlooking. You remember? There's this picture that's been going around. This person actually built a house, and it's he literally made it as a zombie plant. Where it has these large, I think it was concrete blocks. See, I don't uh, get that. Why wouldn't you just build a bunker underground? That's where it got really interesting because this one actually has a uh, it has an open banister, but the I guess the glass that surrounds it goes down and then it kind of shifts the block over it, and then the house actually submerges. Oh, that's really cool. They had a lot of stuff. In fact, uh, you're not gonna see your laptop for it, a bit. Dude, it's cool. Nah, no, it's cool. But no, just... I was gonna show you this. Uh, Probably one of the most interesting ones. I don't know if this is actually going to go through. They I'll, wanted to I'll take it up in post edit. They wanted to take up decommissioned. Just like instead of the black bar over his face, he replaced it with a picture of that. <laughs> yeah, just like right here, this is where it's going. <laughs> uh, there's a, I think it was a group of architect, architects who wanted to use old decommissioned missile silos uh, because they're still structurally sound. And they wanted to make it into an apartment complex. Oh, no, no, no. I that read about cool. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Yeah, it goes out like. I think it goes down like twenty fours or something like that. You can have, you can buy, and it's just you it's have this large chunk, and it is cool. It, it's it's almost like a tiny cylindrical apartment building. It's it's very insane. Yeah. Um, All right, so forty minutes talking about trailers. <laughs> Um, I think we can move on to the next episode. We were getting a little off topic. We're getting, we were getting a little off topic, but it's cool, because this is a podcast, and you just, we're talking about stuff, so. It's mostly stuff we'll revisit later anyways. So, uh, let's see. I want to kind of skip New vs. Old for a second, and we're going to go right into So Bad It's Good, because there's a few movies we mentioned a second ago. We're Piranha gonna, 3 Double D. Piranha 3 Double D is the first one we want to bring up on So Bad It's Good. You, you have to see this movie. Like, you saw the first Piranha, right? Yeah. Okay, the whole first, it was like... Just blood, it's, it's blood, like, blood here, piranha, it's porn okay stars. For a horror movie, let's throw some boobs in it. Yeah, that's like blood, what? piranha, porn stars, and Christopher Lloyd. And his voice back. You gotta throw in some Christopher Lloyd. It, 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 it's a necessity at this point. Yeah, pretty much. And um, people expect it. That the concept for piranha double D was just like, okay, let's just take it and we'll double everything. I think the funniest part. Yeah, of it my, my the, favorite part is that it takes place in a water park. There's a funny. Okay, you know what? There's, there's a fucked up scene, a sex scene, in that movie. With a piranha. Oh, yeah, I didn't know there was a monkey dog, but yeah, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. I'm not going to spoil yeah, it, but you got to see it because it was hilarious. Okay. Like, um, but the whole concept is like it takes place in a water park, Ooh. like this this oh, really sorry. jackass, I guess, it's uncle, right? Like, yeah, and, I think it's and, uncle. inherits a water park because he's older, and he just turns it into like a porno park. Like, there's this whole adult section. Yes. There's, there's this whole adult what? section where they have a camera under the water to check out the nude feet uh, of their and, section. Now, the main thing, the main <laughs> slogan you use is, is double D's getting free. Yeah, that would go. Dope. And um, all the recurring characters come back. Like, they brought in the guy who got his legs chopped off in the first one. Oh, yeah. They, they brought him Dude, back. Dude, the, like, one part of the first one that really made me go, it was when that bitch got her hair tangled up in that yep. rotor, and it went, whoosh, and scalped her. I was like, ooh, okay. <laughs> and the, the funniest thing, Dave Hasselhoff is in the second movie. Like he appears. Like a guy, a lifeguard, of course. Yeah, of course. He's running like, in slow motion all the time. Yes, he, even, he runs in slow motion. Actually, yeah. It'd be honestly, funnier if it was like honestly with him shirtless, and you could just like see it before and after of like like before when he was good looking. Now it's like 
Actually, he does do one where he he hands, <laughs> he hands the kid, uh, or I think it's his mom. He hands her a uh, picture of him from Baywatch. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> Baywatch. Was it had to be. No, yeah, probably. Either that or the SpongeBob movie. <laughs> yeah, either that or Knight Rider, probably. Yeah. yeah. One or two of you. But yeah. um, uh, actually, there's another. Oh, what the hell is it? But when it comes to these movies though, lately, yeah, if Christopher Lloyd's in it, you know you're gonna have a good time watching. Yeah, because and also there was a really good Gary Busey cameo. In the beginning of the movie. Oh my god. I saw the spun the funniest Gary, commercial like, with Gary Busey like, the other day. Gary Busey in this in this whole like five minute intro was out of his fucking mind. Really? Funny. Like just crazy Gary Busey. <laughs> you guys know the Amazon Fire TV, yeah, right? Like just I've Gary is like, hello lamb. <laughs> like, Gary Busey is just like you know, he's one of those guys who just come into a movie and he'll make it better just by saying a few things. I don't know, the better yeah, the best he, one was, he, the, best one was the fire good. stick because he goes you can plug in your TV. Right? You, you saw the commercial. You can plug on TV. Yeah. But the, the best part of that commercial, whenever he's like, he's watching it on his laptop, and all of a sudden he's like, hey, Gary, and it's himself, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. Like, he doesn't know what to do. Like, he's like, <laughs> yeah. He's and just like a little bit out of it. Like, I can't, is that funny to believe that guy went from like Buddy Holly and getting an almost like an Oscar nomination to going to Predator 2? To going to oh, Piranha, like awful to going to Piranha Double D cameo, <laughs> it's really funny the progression of this the, that guy. I don't remember the cameo he did, but I didn't it, it was the beginning. He was like a fisher, and then the piranhas jump out of the water. Well, like uh, Richard Dreyfuss's one from the first movie. I think that he's walking out into the water, and then the piranha kind of attack him. The piranha. Oh, that he, it, he retaliates, and it's funny. Just like beating the shit out of the fish with one of the piranhas. Yeah, here, take right. this, you fucking demon fish. Uh, <laughs> he's just got like the, and I, I didn't know, I didn't know that he had been in a motorcycle accident, and that's what made him kind of unbalanced and stuff like that. Yeah. I had no idea, but apparently like half of his face was like smushed in, and like he had severe brain damage that's and stuff like that. Too. That's why he's got the lisp. I, I had no idea this had even happened to him. Oh, okay. And it's just like, oh, I thought it was like. Like this drugs explains or everything. Yeah. In a sensible way too. Um. Let's see, whatever bad, so bad, it's, I even have Piranha 3 Double D, I'll loan you the movie, okay, so I'll you can go it. see it, um, anyway, what, what else is so bad, it's good, I'm gonna look, just take a look over I do that, when I'm list. looking through my, like, what are my favorite movies, hold on, let me look on my shelf, because I've yeah. got every movie I've ever liked. I've got the li the movies right there, guys, like, it's right there, um, <sighs> what was, Terror Vision, that's another one, so bad, it's good, Terror Vision, it's a movie, it, it's all about TV. Like it's his family in the '80s, and it is so over the top, colorful, cartoony '80s. Uh -huh. Like everything is, and it's about this alien pet that comes down from space and gets sapped through the television signals. They're trying to banish it to another planet uh -huh. for unknown reasons. So they're gonna shoot it through the TV <coughs> signals. I uh, mean, through the signals in space, and then they get captured by a satellite, and it gets transported to regular world, and it eats people. Like, like yeah. And the, okay. the creepy thing about this movie, like, or the funny thing, is the movie is so self-aware of itself that at points you're just like, you're having fun with this. Because even the alien itself, it doesn't look <laughs> intimidating whatsoever. It's like a big glob of shit with eyeballs. The blob. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like the blob that ate a trash can. Oh, so you guys heard about the new blob coming out, right? And, um, and like, they're going to explain the blob's origin story? Yeah. Um, I've, actually, I've actually <laughs> seen a few versions of the blob. Yeah, I even saw the 80s blob, which the only thing they added to that movie was gore. More blob, more gore. I like the Five stars. Really when you guys talk about the blob, all I can think of is just uh, R.L. Stein's The Blob Who Ate Everything. Yeah, oh, um, <laughs> I was just looking over there. Another quick, involving some form of fish, so bad it's good, Shark Knight. Because that, uh... be that movie cannot be classified as good at all. And Don't even get me started no, on that. No, listen. I was thinking, when I saw that trailer, the fate of the rest of any shark movie that will ever come out rests on this movie. And Don't fuck up. And then it fucked up. Yeah, and the whole thing was like, uh, instead of calling it sharks, I told you this before, they should call it Hicks with sharks. Hicks with shark pets. How, how did the sharks even get that far inland? Did they even... I don't know, but kind of explanation on that. I'll tell you, the best shark scene in that movie was when the shark jumped out in the air and grabbed that dude off a cycle. Just that was funny to me. Like, oh my god, like, I'm gonna get away. Over the top dramatic. 
you know, but I think sometimes these type of movies need to go over dramatic. Sometimes, like I don't, I would disagree. I, th- I think I don't the only need. reason Jaws was so successful is because their shark malfunctioned and they hardly had it on screen at all. Yeah, is it, it builds up more tension, and that's why yeah. I liked the last Godzilla movie a lot. Yeah, but like when you talk about a movie like that, it's no longer that scary anymore. It doesn't age that well. It, it, that that tactic does age well. It just it depends on how you use it. Like yeah. um. It, it, comic books do it really well yeah. when they're trying to add a new character or something and they give it teases and stuff like that uh, one I can brings to mind uh, was something they've been building up to like I think for almost two years now yeah. was this reveal of uh, I can't remember his name like Umbar Ungata or something like that yeah. and it's it was like this mysterious hooded figure in the Marvel Universe that's been going on for like two years and he just got revealed to be Doctor Doom. It's it's stuff like that. It's like if you go over time, even like two years, they waited, and it was still yeah. a good reveal. So or supposedly it's supposed to be still a good reveal. It's like it can be done right, but you really got to have writers that are committed to that. Yeah. And see, sometimes they're not fully committed to that idea, but you got to be all in. Yeah. I'm thinking. So what do you guys consider? Let me in. Or I mean, not let me. Uh, you're next. You're next. Um, I liked. That. You know what, your next one would be considered semi-grindhouse. Like, no lie. Huh, huh. Another one that's so bad it's good? Grindhouse. <laughs> uh, it grind, yeah, Grindhouse, the works of, what was it, uh, Rodriguez and, and Tarantino? Uh, they worked kind of, together to make that happen? It was kind of a funny yeah. moment. I still prefer Death Proof, the Quentin Tarantino half of that project. Yeah. Very, very good. I just like Planet Terror because of that machine gun leg. I want that machine gun leg. I'll, I'll hang that prop in my room if I could get it. <laughs> Actually, uh, well, yeah. it gets kind of funny with uh, with your next. It, it wasn't a bad movie. It was actually pretty good, but I think it was just it appeals to those who you just want to have fun at the movies. Where yeah, the whole for the first part of the movie, you get some murder. You get like because you're expecting. I'm like I'm gonna go in this movie. I'm gonna watch a bunch of people die. You get like two murders in the beginning of the movie, and then the movie. Shuts up for fifteen minutes and then it picks up again. See, that's just bad pacing. Yeah, yeah that was just like it, it, that it was just... really bad. I was ta- I was looking at Cam. I was like, this better get started. And then immediately, as I'm saying that, it gets started. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like there we go. It's kind of. I think. I think um, that is like you run into parts of the movie where there's like thirty minutes where nothing's happening. Well, I think yeah. they did that on purpose just because of the fact that they wanted people to get that feeling like. Okay, well, this is just going to give me like a regular horror movie. Just nothing's happening, and what the fuck? Then wolf mask people come out from the strangers. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't, and it's pretty cliched and obvious the whole story of it. Like, not even, no plot twist you could not see coming a mile away. Yeah. What's up with the uh, the very last scene with the? Uh, I'm trying to say. I did not about. see that coming. <laughs> what? I was like, ah! <laughs> I watched two hours of this for that. Yes! Oh man, another one that that reminds me of is uh, a pretty good movie, Last Day on Mars. Have you guys seen that? No. The Last Days on Mars, okay. Yeah, it's well, it's starring Dave yeah. Schreiber. I mean, it, that whole movie for your next I mean, it just ran through the whole typical thing. And honestly, the very last kind of revelation that they had was pretty. I didn't really expect it. I mean, I kind of thought, okay, that character's gone, whatever, fine. Just, yeah. And then it's just like, wait a minute, you're. What? Yeah, it yeah. wasn't the best twist, but it was something I definitely didn't see coming. I kind of saw it coming, like, uh, this guy's been gone way too long, he's either dead, or he's part of it. Yeah. Like, that was either, I was I was waiting for him to get thrown through a window, or I for him to show up. I we're going to find his corpse bloodied and mangled, nah. but nope. They wanted to go a different one. Yeah. Well, was, and I'm kind of glad they went that route, because of how they ended that part. I was yeah. like... Good job, movie. Yeah, you're starting it's, to. Re- it's good stuff. You're redeeming yourself. I, my favorite scene had to be the blender scene in that movie. That was your favorite scene. That was my that was favorite awesome. scene in the that movie. That was good stuff. I saw that scene. I'm like, okay, this is how I'm defining this movie. That it's was, like I'm keeping that was a, a good bl- one. Screw but on my Bowie knife. I'm putting a blender. That was on my one, bed. but I honestly have to say, I think one of my favorite scenes in there was just the scene with the nail board. Because you just see <laughs> <guys> <laughs> like. Oh yeah. That's straight up Home Alone shit right there. Oh yeah. Or even the whole scene where I the would dude... like to see like an Uber graphic Home Alone. <laughs> 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 right. Home Alone twenty seven. Yeah, like, the murder is on. Just like some razor blades. Oh no, wait. Like super. We come back. Walk through. And you're like, 
we get we get the guy back from the original Home Alone, and we just have him murder those two guys. Holy Culkin! Oh man, I would watch that Hol- movie. Homo Culkin in again, and just have him look crazy. Oh my God, Ken, did you see that Reddit post about the Batman? But like, I'm just having look Trump. crazy, uh, and just have him like set up murder traps, like and he'll become a serial killer in the end. Ooh, that, that would, would actually be exactly. like That's Saw how- almost. Yeah, Home Alone, Saw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I saw when I was Home Alone. <laughs> no, it just starts uh, off with him. You never saw this coming. No, 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 he just starts off with the kid from Home Alone. He just picks up the mask. Yes. <laughs> oh, man, it's okay. okay. Basically, the post on Reddit was... Oh, no, because he, he actually Batman. did play a crazy guy. He was uh, the good son. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He did play that. That's what that was a good movie. The good that. son was a movie with Macaulay Culkin where he... He was like a really disturbed child. He killed animals and stuff. And and it was actually... It's funny. It was with Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood. They were both in that movie together. That's who played the younger brother. Oh, yes. my God. Okay. And they... It was I was just thinking... It's like the start of Elijah Wood and the kind of the end of Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, a little bit. Because the second you make the Home Alone kid say, don't fuck with me, that's when his career starts to die. <laughs> that's done. Yeah, okay. So, okay. okay, go ahead, go ahead. So what it was is it's basically a pitch for like the perfect Batman movie. Okay. And what it is is like all the Batman from uh, the previous years, like Adam West is there, but he's kind of old and senile, <laughs> and all the way to Batfleck, and he's there, and they have gathered all the actors who have played Batman, and it's spo- it's supposed to be just this, like, big event, and it's like a Comic-Con, but this Comic-Con is like a mall, for some reason, like the Mall of America or whatever, and um, basically, like, terrorists take over, <laughs> and um, these Actors are supposed to like need to actually like become you know, Batman, be, become Batman, the Batman, and basically like uh, I mean, it's like it, it reads out a bunch of dynamics. Like if you guys could pull this up, it's I would hilarious. I would just see that to um, I would just see that movie for Adam West to be but, like, like come up Adam not that West. It just it sounds like a genuinely good movie. Like I would definitely watch it's that. Horrible art, and it's Batman, Batman their, version. It's horrible art call mixed call. with Birdman, mixed with Batman. Yeah, yeah. they just gotta call it the Batman's. The Batman. Yeah, the Batmans. That's what the Batman. That's what the post was called. Really? Yeah, the Batmans. Oh. Or the Batmans. Oh, yeah, Batman. Just have one of the Batman wheel a bat. Oh, oh really? God. It was, it was dope, It'd though. be funny, though, if, you, if Adam was literally just sitting there all happy in the movie while well, all this shit's going down, then he go. Uh, then as soon as he sees the kid fighting, he goes, hey there, young crime stopper. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, my God. That would just be, like, the best movie ever, like, for like, sure. Like, on the way, he, like, pulls out a little kid. It t- makes him the Robin. He's like, you have to say this like this yeah. to get me going. <laughs> you gotta say, holy G. Willikers, Batman. That's right, because I am Adam West. And then he and the little boy disappear until the end of the movie. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, okay. Can't man. do that to Adam. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. At this point, he might be so senile, he might not remember filming that bit. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, he might not, he genuinely might not have to act, but just like, Come here, buddy. Let's go film this movie for a little oh, bit. Uh, what? What's going on? Tyler Boyce actually is still—he's still doing still voice acting for Family Guy. Yeah, really? He yeah, actually, man, that's him. I didn't really know he was still He's Mayor West. All yeah, the time. I knew he was Mayor West. I didn't know. No, I, no, I, no, I, there was I a great scene. show in like six years. There's a great scene in this recent episode where he just Cleveland becomes a therapist, and then he's talking to Adam West. He goes, "Sir, I believe that you're actually using these silly demeanors in order to hide a darker personality that I think you know about, and that you're." Just trying to hide, and then, he, and I think that you're downright scared. You, know? you just see, I almost go, "Hell, sir! I think that you're absolutely fucking right." Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> then he goes, "Dad, what are my spaghetti hats?" <laughs> oh lord, spaghetti hat! Yeah. Oh man. Uh, frickety frackety frick. That was. I, out of all the characters of Family Guy, honestly, it is just fun when Adam just, just joins there. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, one, another, so bad it's good. I'm trying to make you watch this movie. It's like on American Dad, um, where they have Patrick Stewart on there saying ridiculous shit all the time. It's just good stuff. I'm trying to make you watch this movie. Troll 2. What? I cannot get him to watch Troll 2. Have you seen it? Uh, I've seen a movie called Troll Hunter. No, no, no. Troll no, 2. Troll 2. Never okay. heard of Troll This is like one of the most famous, bad, good, so bad it's good movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll watch it. It's right there. Um, but it's like, synopsis is this whole family goes to this town called Nilbog. It's goblin spelled backwards. Uh, ha! Yeah. Nilbog, which is goblin spelled backwards. There's strike one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they go to this town where it's 
for vacation, uh, shitty ass town called Nilbog. And the uh, whole premise is like, if these people eat the food that the Nilbog people make, it'll turn them into green plant goo so that they can turn into goblins. Wait, was this a sci fi movie? No. And it's a shitty sequel to a shitty movie called Troll, but it has nothing to do with the first one. They just want to make another one. And the effects are terrible. The the, the there's one okay, I'm gonna spoil the scene because it's so bad it, Go for it, it kind of proves it's bad. There's a scene where the kid is trying to get the family to stop eating the bad food because they'll turn to plant goo the second it touches their mouth. And some kind of thing freezes them in space and time and not the kid. And he's like, you gotta stop them. You gotta stop him. He's like, I know what to do. And he pisses on everything. <laughs> and then the father starts <laughs> whipping him and he starts going, I will not have this. You can't piss on hospitality. <laughs> I didn't piss on hospitality. No, 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 I pissed you know, all over your food. Yeah. No, no, no. You know it's gonna just, you know it's just gonna drive over the fucking top. Huh. The kid just all of a sudden realizes he started writing on a piece of paper, just mailbox backwards, and he just holds it to me like, oh my god. That's probably, a, <gasps> I, that's probably a scene in the movie that I did not remember, but also the famous oh my god scene happens in that movie. Like, the whole famous, they're eating her, and then they're gonna eat me. Oh my god. That's what I keep <laughs> just, oh yeah, that, 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 my that. god. <sighs> but it's so forced and fake that it's not oh even... Oh my god. Oh my. Just, oh my. <laughs> it's so bad, like. But the movie is just. Oh no. One, it's it's Nilgob. Oh my. <laughs> That's it. Troll 3, George Takei. <laughs> Trolls 3, George Takei. And then we'll have Warwick Davis as a troll. Or Troll 3, Troll Dolls. <laughs> oh, actually, speaking of Warwick Davis, that's another so bad it's good movie. Leprechaun. No, not even kidding. Like, Leprechaun. <laughs> Is a movie. We have a new one coming out. You too. should never take that movie serious. And that's oh, dude, that already came out. Yeah, it did. It it, it, it was um, uh, partnered with uh, WWE Entertainment, so they had like a, a midget wrestler doing the part of the Leprechaun, and it was supposed to be the worst thing that anybody has ever subjected their eyeballs to. Well, of course, the WWE has been fucking up a lot. The WWE, I don't, I don't even follow. Like, okay, like, I just know that they. Here's what happened. To go super here's basically what they tried, and this sums up why they fucked up. They elected a wrestler to win the WrestleMania, to win WrestleMania, I mean, who everybody hates. Who? Uh, his name is Roman Reigns. Um, like, the second he came out into Royal Rumble, that's who's going to WrestleMania if you win that. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, that's the sec- still a thing, the, right? Yeah, kind of. The second, uh, part, yeah, kind of. The I second so Reigns old. comes out, everybody <laughs> booed the shit out of him. Yeah. And they made him win WrestleMania, and then they're like, Bullshit! 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 Which, of course, on your television sounded like bull. Beep, yeah. Bull, um, beep. Well, it's pay per view. So. Oh, okay. So but anyway, um, um, if you guys watch, like, if you go, you have a little career with channel subscribe, right? Yeah. He does a thing called the Mark Remark, which is a recap of wrestling. If you, he actually does a thirty-minute recap of the Royal Rumble, so you can see all the faults that people made and like how effed up that whole enforce the whole thing was. Like yeah. it's obviously the whole thing scripted nowadays, but like still, you have to give the people what they want. Apparently not. Yeah. Yeah. But um, damn, man, we've gone off track. We are off this oh planet. Oh god, my allergies. Are we just are all over me. the universe right now. Hey, universe. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Call back from minute one. Yeah. Which will then be deleted. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally, totally not throwing that at the beginning of this. Um, oh man, what else? What what else is on this stupid list? Uh, we got new versus old, dumb sequels, and what have you seen? Which one do you guys want to? Honestly, well, you want to talk about sequels? Honestly, I really just fucking hate okay. the dumb sequels. We'll go right to that then. Oh yeah. Okay, you, you got some. Uh, it's not really a sequel. I guess it's a reboot, but just Nightmare on Elm Street. New versus old. That was just fucking terrible. Ugh. The reboot for Night. Yeah, the, it. The worst well, part was the end. <laughs> well, okay, that yeah. was easily the worst. First of all, like they ripped off way too much from the first one. They weren't too creative with the kills and the the ways they were getting rid of them. You know, like yeah, it just and the whole makeup for Freddy was like they just smeared cheese all over his it face. Was weird. Like even you know the the whole concept they just made a pizza and crafted his face. This one, it looks like they really just smeared a bunch of makeup and cheese on his face and melted that. Yeah, like, it's like, come here, it's time for your pizza facial. And then they just slapped him in the face with a plaster, poof, yeah, go it, on it, set. It's like, it's a pizza pie fight, not a regular pie fight. And I wouldn't care so much, like, if 
you this know, is like if you want to go back to the lights, <laughs> I have the entire box of the original series. And yeah, I love that one. It's a it's a good box that you got, man. Like I even have the I have the Friday the Thirteenth set, like that has all the movies. Yeah, and he's got the the Nightmare set, which is a good box set. Yeah, I've got the Freddy vs. That has the that even has a documentary on it, which is pretty cool. I absolutely love the box, and that just shows you like the evolution of Freddy or how he became well, something well, to fear to something to laugh at. Well, I think yeah. all the scenes are just I think one of the best ones, the uh, best great and humor scenes, is just that part where. Uh, you see Freddy pop out of the TV uh, with the girl, and he grabs her. And in the documentary, they're actually talking about how in, during that scene, they were just kind of going, uh, they wanted him to say something like, Welcome to the big, welcome, you made it to the big time, Shelly, you're on TV. And then they were just like, No, 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 that doesn't sound, that's not stupid. What? Robert Dingley, he please do this line and just, Welcome to prime time, bitch. And then he just totally, in, there you go. just grabbed the force of Freddy and made it his own because it was him oh yeah and it was really he just made that character his and from that point on Robert England has forever been personified in the realm of horror like you can find him on the sci-fi channel in a few movies you can find him on a few straights of DVD movies like even Jack Brooks Monster Slayer Jack. if you've ever seen that any, movie any TV show ever he's been in an episode <laughs> <laughs> like Supernatural Jack. he was the Dr. England or Dr. Kruger or something like that I don't remember yeah he was the one in the Oh, what like the season eight, nine, something around there. Nine, yeah, yeah. Um, and he was also the most recently in something I watched was uh, I started watching the new Hawaii Five O TV show, and um, he pops up in there, doesn't he? Too? And actually, yeah, he does. Um, I saw that episode. When you got to mention uh, Nightmare, you kind of got to mention Friday the Thirteenth because they're kind of a yin and yang of each other. And, and apparently, Friday the Thirteenth is getting a new movie that's supposed to be more like the first one. Yeah, that whole the and whole like reboot the for that movie was. I'm not getting that. The only thing I think that kind of made that movie was. Um, was it Jared or it was Jared Padalecki, right? Who was in them? Yeah. In that one, he kind of made the movie. It's like they just took a year off. Okay, I'll go be in My Bloody Valentine. Yeah. We'll be in Friday the Thirteenth. We'll finish our shitty horror movies, and then we'll keep doing Supernatural. It's like good plan, guys. Yeah. yeah you right. Mission the, accomplished. The whole thing. I wanted to see a cameo. Like I, I was waiting for that movie to be like Dean comes out like. We have to kill uh, freaking Jason, yeah. and they gun him down like in the. End. I will watch that movie till the end of time if they add something like, like that. Actually, they should do that, like a crossover movie, like Supernatural oh, versus this I movie. I just want like a Supernatural movie. That would be so dope. But, yeah, but like that would be so cool. Like even if it was just like a one-hour special, like just have them get shot into the realm of TV. You know what? How dope would it be if like fucking no, Sam no, no, and Dean they, came they actually to? Actually, could do that. Because if they did it this year, and they were trying to say, like, uh, the real Loki was actually trying to mess with people in the town, and he's just like, okay. Like, he just start, he just finds a town, and he's just like, I'm going to rename this Crystal Lake. I'm going to put this and make it Elm Street. I'm going to put here, and I'm going to make this a swamp, uh, the Black Lagoon. I'm yeah. going to make this here and that there. I mean, they've talked about Loki. I mean, they, uh, the, the But he's, Joker. like, confirmed dead, though, now, right? No. Uh... Well, according to that, Gabriel, Gabriel kind of just said, he's not here, and I nobody's seen him, so I'm going to take his face. Yeah, yeah but uh, he made the, the death video uh, right before, no, but that's like Gabriel. two episodes before Swan Song. Yeah, that's Gabriel, yeah. though. That's not Loki. That's yeah, he Loki. is Loki. No. Gabriel just assumed the identity of Oh, so I, I, You remember that episode where he's just like... You're not a, you're not actually a trickster, are you? And he's just like, and then he no, dropped the no, holy I, water and burned that shit, and then like maybe you've always been an angel. Yeah, I, I remember that. That was the yeah, same episode just where they like, had all the demigods and stuff in that hotel. Yeah, that's why he said that he just got a facelift. He yeah. actually changed his body to make it look like he was Loki, which is the poor excuse. Like we, we gotta get somebody uh, else to play that. this guy. I think <laughs> I'll have to. We I'll gotta get. Have to we gotta get another episode. actor to come in and play him. It was a really quick thing where it's just like bring it back. It'll cost too much. He's just like. So why are you playing a trickster? He's just like, well, I car, I got a facelift, car got my own planet of the Earth, and you two chuckleheads fucked it up, right? Just there you go. Interesting. It's funny that season is like how many seasons is the show in? Uh, ten. 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 And we're going back to the fourth season. And for and me, just, and just, when you talk about the show, it's, for me, it's the first five seasons are so perfect. They, like really, like it, as good as this show is, and it's still good. Don't get me wrong. They really should have stopped after five because that would have been just a great bookend with the Swan yeah. Song. Swan Song was the one where uh, Dean died, right? Before Lazarus Rising? No, nope. Sam. Sam. No, yeah, I Sam dragged know. himself into yeah. hell. The with Swan Song is the uh, one where they uh, where um, they 
from Sam and the Pit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they trap Lucifer. And um, then oh, at right. the end of the episode, and the only reason they added this bit, I, um, I read a commentary about it, and um, the only reason they added the end scene where Sam is alive and outside of Dean's house and stuff like that, the only reason they did that is because last minute they got word that they were getting renewed for a sixth season. So they were so, like, okay, let's give them something. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, if, if they had just ended it right there, I would be fine. I, I seriously, because I saw that again and again, I was like, this is really good. And But when, I mean, when you think about it, it's Honestly, yeah, though, what, yeah, what I really just love it is I really want to see what they're going to do with the Mark Cain, where it's literally just this desperation point where now they know they can't get rid of it. Cain has already shown exactly what the hell happens to you if you even for a moment kind of relapse. And it's just reached this point where it's going to be interesting if Demon Dean comes back. Yeah. What I want to happen, to be honest with you, is I want Demon Dean to come back and bring out Demon Blood Sam, and then both they do be get evil out. for a season, just one season. Kind of like in um, what was it Angel or Buffy, where the guy it was Angel Angel, where the guy was evil for like half a season. Yeah. Oh no no no, you're right. That well, that was on Buffy. It was like season two of Buffy. Okay. Where really they cool where they, they turn him against her. Well, yeah. it would be cool to get like a Doctor. It's the same guy. <laughs> yeah, it's the same guy, but a different show. Yeah. It would be cool if they did like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hive thing where it just like they kind of took over for a second and it's just like the demon side just kind of pop in. Because yeah. they, they've shown the, they've shown like special effects where uh, the demons when they start to regain humanity, one of their eyes goes back and then the other one does. So it'd be cool if they, it could show like yeah, the Yeah, it just kind of recedes a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say what a dumb sequel. So. <laughs> I think, or uh, uh, new versus old, technically, is what we're into right now. So, oh, but dumb sequel. Let's. We'll get into that in a minute. But one more, uh, like, um, oh. like, there's so many actually new versus old, like so many remakes, and I kind of hate that that we've gotten to the point where we're remaking, remaking everything. I understand new technology and everything, but like sometimes you just don't fuck with the original. Yeah. Like. Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> and like what we were talking about during the trailer segment, uh, Jurassic Park and Terminator and all that stuff. Like, um, don't get me wrong, the sequels are, are good. But like, here's the thing with the, um, not the, as the original. With Terminator, the second one is the best. Yeah. But I, I, I do like the first one a little bit more, to be yeah. honest, but number two is awesome. Just like Alien. Aliens is the better movie. Yeah. And like... Oh, well... For me, it's the better action movie, and no, oh, number one is the better horror about, um, movie, just because it's more Alien of a slow burn. Really like Neil Blomkamp, yeah, that's what I want to talk about. On, Here's uh, the thing with Neil Blomkamp. He, he did... The sequels. His last movie's Chappie, right? Chappie. And everybody keeps saying that movie's, like, just not that good. Like, it's, it's, it's got a good concept, but lacks on execution. Exactly. Like, the commentary is so... Hey! Yeah. Instead of health insurance, it's child abuse or something like that. Yeah. But instead of child, it's, just show us child abuse. It's cool. We can take it. We don't need a robot yeah, <laughs> with a child-like innocence. But, like, um, if he's directing, I believe this guy could do the, a good job. Because he makes a creative sci-fi world, even though it's, some parts it's kind of generic. He has his own style to doing it. Yeah. But he could do it, I think. I think he can do it, but it's not going to turn like, out any better. But if, really, if fucking really Scott's do it, it's going to be too slow. You don't know that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Prometheus was good. You liked that. I, I kind of liked that, but what? You didn't like Prometheus? I didn't I'm think it. Uh, yeah. I felt like it was incredibly underwritten. I'm sorry, man. Bless me. They try, it's like they tried to do so many things. Here's, they just here's what I kept saying to Ken every time, or yeah, every time we were watching that movie. Like everybody in this movie is an asshole to this person, or this person for another reason. It doesn't make any fucking sense. And then it gets for the obvious, the guy wants to live forever thing, which is such a fucking cliche in this type of movie. He's like, these guys created us. Surely they can make us live longer. True, but... Fuck you, movie. There is one thing that they did. <laughs> I hated that. There is one thing that they did spawn that was just amazing. The vagina monster? No, the fact that they went <laughs> that to Prometheus awesome. School running away from things. Yeah, the Prometheus School for running away from things. You just run in a straight line from the thing and hope to God you are running. I don't understand. That was the one scene that really bugged me. It's like, it's like a giant donut coming down on her. It's like, it's this thin. Move five feet that way and watch it roll past you. It's Come like, on. Yeah, and the whole sequel bay with the mutant alien baby thingy that looked kind of cool, that didn't make up for the rest of the movie for me. Like, no. If they had shown a few more aliens and, like, ended it with aliens attacking, 
I could forgive that little bit. Well, see, but... the thing about that is, it's like a, uh, like I think a few hundred years before even the first Alien movie starts, and so I know, but it's... like the, the whole reason is that they hate the humans, is they could spawn the aliens from their bodies, like because the virus mixed with them, yeah, could create the aliens. But at the same time, the virus mixed with them could create the the spawners that could make them create the aliens. You know, I found really which weird. is it's a clusterfuck of ideas that. It could make a great movie, I think, if they just taken a little more time to work on the script Actually, you know and not weird. made such uh, cliched idiot scientists. You know what's a really weird part about the whole thing? Huh. Just the fact that that fucking uh, octopus star thing and the original human could actually spawn that. Yeah. Uh, spawn the alien, which makes no fucking sense because that's a completely dramatic, that's an extremely dramatic change from the squid thing that was in her to well, that thing. To see, the, it's about uh, the black stuff in the jars. What that is, is is essentially the essence of life. Yeah. Whatever's there, it can be the deadest thing in the universe. It will somehow make life from it. And but so at the same it, time... It falls and, it like, kind of twists its way out, and that's why it was... But at the same time, it was killing people. Like it, like, it killed that guy who, he, he, when he drank it, it killed him, which they didn't give the best explanation for, other than yeah. the fact that it... After he banged her, he left his alien seed into her, which is really weird. Like it's like, okay, you're gonna give your seed and then you're gonna die. And I don't that's really what it was going know what he turned into though. It's weird. And then like, but whatever he is, that movie I was trying to tell you about, Last Days on Mar- Last Days on Mars, and that, that had the zombie. weird ending. They kind of look exactly like that dude in the space suit, especially because most of them have spacesuits on their zombie. Mars. You mean? Sort of, yeah. Just a little bit, and it's not fully explained where it is, but it's a good movie. It's just it's gonna yeah. be the worst ending well, in the world. Weird, it's not bit. much of a dumb sequel as it is a weird spinoff. Well, I think the the weird, prequel I think thing. A really odd thing. Yeah. So the the and sequel being there was like a like face hunter like yeah. thing that they found inside the jar. Yeah. The guy was staring at that for a while. They don't know what the hell made that. The guy goes over and he's uh, well when he gets in uh, when he gets when he ingests that shit, it made his sperm into a multi-tailed thing to turn into the starfish. Yeah. And then when that thing fuses with the... You know what? The I guy, thought it um, turns into the blue alien. I thought when that's what got in, it was going to rip his dick in four pieces. Yeah, right. And make like, an alien squid baby, you're like... Ah! <laughs> and scare the shit out of him. Like, what are you doing? Uh, I think the weirdest part, though, is just that, out of all that, I mean, you talk about the alien series, and the aliens, yeah. they don't really... If the face hugger hits whatever the fuck it is, yeah, yeah that's it. But... If it's human, it'll stand upright. If it's a dog thing, they on fours, and then if it's but it's not very different from that. And then Resurrection had that weird human alien hybrid that thing see. that could see, and I don't think that was the worst idea they could have given it, but the execution the wasn't the but best. But wasn't that one like straight up genetically modified though? Like it, no, 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 like, like the, no, the whole thing was like the the cloned Ridley, and then they made it was a queen inside of her, and then the queen took part of her. When it was born, oh, yeah, it yeah, ripped yeah. out her ovaries apparently. And, and it made like it grew a womb instead of growing. Which eggs. doesn't make sense. I would like to know where they got the DNA to make a new Rid- Ridley. Yeah, that's exactly the thing. She, she jumped into dude, molten. We saw, we saw Alien Three, so she steel. She burned. Like unless they're saying there's like a tiny microscopic blood drop that hit the railing, which it didn't. We no, know it, it did not. That was like a twenty foot drop. That was a cool and, scene and though. Right? Who, who's the, the, who's the Wayland in uh, Alien Three? I'd like to know. He was a robot. Yeah, you don't remember that there was like a last minute scene where he got hit and you saw sparks or something fly because the original Whalen he was dead in the Alien vs Predator, like because that connects for some reason. <laughs> and AVP two, which was I don't, fucking I don't necessarily terrible. consider AVP or AVP two any kind of canon. You know though. what? I I wouldn't even call AVP two a movie. <laughs> yeah, AVP two. I you which know what? sucks because it took place in Colorado. I, I saw it in Colorado at the time. And I, was I like, saw yeah. that movie with my father. And he took me to this movie because my mother, my mother and my sister were going to see like a kitty movie, and my dad's like, "Let's go see them, cool." Yeah. And this movie was so quiet, it was so dark, it was so fucking boring that we couldn't even finish so, it. So so dark, you couldn't see anything yeah. going on on the screen. It's the movie theater. The lighting was so terrible, and the, the dialogue was. I so... had to readjust my TV just yeah. to watch the DVD. And then when shit happened, it wasn't even that entertaining. Like. Honestly, what really kind of just gets really fucking stupid is that during that period of time, they had to they try to artificially lighten things because yeah. it was easier to adjust the brightness of the bulb that they use inside of the uh, it's in front of the damn it the projector. Yeah, more so than it is to artificially darken things. Even though that nowadays 
you see, you have a room and it's more well, it's more well lit than this. Yeah. But they'll have twenty lights in front of us, and that's how. And then they'll just basically say, "We'll dim right. it down," and that's why it's easier to see things. But and it's like a, a really you, stupid. You thing know, you fucked up when your game is more entertaining than your movie. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: really stupid. So when they digitize, yeah, it's the, B. When, when they digitize the film, yeah, the, when they digitize a lot of the film, they just use whatever the regular bulb would be, and then they basically say, "Okay, that's what it looks like." They yeah. should have used a brighter bulb so that they can actually get a brighter, uh, so that it's a bit clearer, and then you could just artificially dim it down if you wanted. Yeah. Because a lot of that shit, hell, we watched Halloween, the original one, and we couldn't see shit. Nope. Could not see, because that was a DVD copy that I had, and that was so horribly, like, um, just, um, what was it, transferred from, yeah. it was bad, just bad, bad. Yeah. But the movie itself, I thought it was good. I mean, like, it kind of put you to sleep. I fell asleep. Like, he fell asleep through Jaws, through Halloween, through... No, I watched Jaws. I thought he fell asleep, like, in mid-movie. That was me. Oh. Me and you were watching it for, like, the 50th time, and I, I passed out. It was, like, in my defense, it was, like, 3 in the morning, but come Okay, on. I guess we, so. We had just watched, like, like 2 or 3, well, uh... I guess really... Oh, it gets stupid, though. Is that well, we're we're the the Shannon. Uh, at the time, he was... We were talking about it, and we were thinking about going to sleep already. He's like, no, 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 let's watch one more movie. I'm, like, I'm about to fucking pass out. And we no, would always no. pass out, because, like, he did have a little more energy than us, I think. Or, but he would pass out. But he would <laughs> pass out eventually during that movie. We were like, let's just go to sleep and watch the rest of the movie later. And it got to the point where just we were watching some movies and passing out and missing it. So we had to rewatch that movie at a certain point. Except in the Halloween. Morning. Except Halloween. Except for Halloween. And I think The Grudge. Or was it? Which no, we, we did a marathon of the Grudge. Yeah, we also did a marathon of the Saw movies. I kind of fell asleep no, wait, in no, no, Grudge no, Three, though. I, that was one of the most annoying things. For I wanted to do a full-on marathon of Saw. And he's yeah. like, no, no, no. Let's watch Saw One, and we'll watch something else. Saw Two, something yeah. else. Yeah. And then eventually, when we got to Saw Two, we just ended up saying, we want, it. we got to see more. Yeah. We to get yeah. More of this. Saw Two was kind of good. No, it the first two good. Saw movies I think were really good, and then like the three. Could, three they could have ended it. You gotta admit, you gotta admit that three and four were what really made no, the series. No, I like three and four. I definitely do. But two for me is the best one. Like yeah. the rest of the movies, like I think they were really trying to wrap this whole thing up and continue the story at the same time. Like eventually, they're like we just gotta wrap this up at one point. Honestly, I did love seven, the, the final act, because of the fact that it just it tied everything together in such a great way that it, it was it made it feel like it was bigger than they they originally thought it was gonna be. Because it was. <laughs> the whole thing, it was just like a little short film that got a theatrical release to a bigger film that became what it is today. Yeah, pretty much. It just got, I don't want to say hoard into a franchise, but we're going to say it got hoarded into a franchise. A little bit. I mean, because the needs of the mini outweigh the needs of the cash. <laughs> At least, it, at least you gotta admit that it was a good. It was a nice. I enjoyed ride. the series. Like it, the series kept entertaining me. I'm not gonna say there was the one I I said was shit. I'm not gonna say that. Yeah. I mean, they did have the slower ones, but especially the one where they were explaining the backstory as to why he started doing this. Yeah, that was a little boring. But that at least they tried to give you a backstory as to why instead of just saying and kind of he's a fucking sociopath and I kind of think it was the second to last one or the very last one where he was kind of getting back at that um the insurance dealer even though it was more of a personal story that was a little more boring and when he was telling his part like it's like so you choose who lives or dies that was the interesting part but everything else was just boring talk about him getting his cancer treatment yeah pretty much and yeah. but at least they tried at least they tried are we good with dumb sequels, or do you want to go into more modern stuff, or do you want to move on to the next section? Well, thankfully, sequels have been not as bad. Can we hang my bag? Like, um, you got anything, any other bad dumb sequels? Thank you, sir. Just wanted to talk about Alien 5 and how I think that's going to end up being terrible. Okay. And, um, Just anything? I don't know. I mean, I don't really... I kind of avoid sequels lately just because like, okay. there's a lot of them that just... You look at it and you side say, please. You and me, we're already blown through the dumb sequel of the Hellraiser series. Actually, yeah, if you want to talk about dumb movies, so. Well, it's more dumb sequels, just like. Well, actually, I just thought about this when you're we talking about the. When we just started stopping it's just. Uh, and when you talk about bad Baku movies, just go back to that. All I can think of is Yakuza Ben. Yakuza Weapon, like, so bad it's good? Yeah, that was just. That was a fun <laughs> movie, like. That, that's a strict, it's a foreign film. Based on a manga, actually, called Yakuza Weapon, 
and it's just out of its mind insane. Like, just about a Yakuza who gets his arm and leg blown off and gets it replaced with a rocket launcher kneecap and a machine gun forming arm. Yeah. The movie's fun it's as like hell. Mega Man on meth. The movie's fun as hell, but it's stupid as fuck. <laughs> At one point, you see this guy, and he, you see these two guys running away, and then he chucks this piece of dynamite, and the dynamite starts spinning around. It goes around another guy, which just leans back, and then it goes around the corner and blows him off. That, that's the kind of stupidity we're talking about. Nice. Or even like he grabs a missile and all he does is he screams, It's all willpower! And he just holds the missile in his hand. That's the kind of stupidity and insanity we're talking about. I don't know. The best one though, is when at one point they're in this giant building. I've hired a elite assassins just to kill you on every single floor. And he goes, I'm not going up to you. You're coming down to me. And he turns around and there's a giant pile of TNT. And they go, and then he's running behind the counter, and then he blows. And every floor just drops oh like God. dominoes. Oh, that's ridiculous! Yeah, right out of the, right out of a comic book, just pop, 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 and pop. then it's just the guy on the top yeah. floor. The top floor is okay. He's like, and then and he's whole, like, get down, then, you bitch! And then there's a hole right there, and then he's just like, see, <laughs> yep. There it is a great Express movie. going. Like, down. you need that. That's a fun movie. It's on Netflix. It, the, the, it is. The best part about it, though, is just that when you see it, the guy looks at the machine and then the, the computer displays the building, and it used to be this tall, and then it's like, it's just that building, like half, half, half just two <laughs> floors. That's funny. I'd, um, it is a great movie. Oh, yeah, it's fun. I don't um, to watch. Next section is bad book adaptions. This is a huge thing that's been happening in. Recent Fifty Shades great. Fifty Shades motherfucking shit. <laughs> Fifty Shades um, um, that's enough. That's one movie, yes. But this is kind of a recurring thing that's been happening for the past I don't know how many years. Um, ever Pretty since like since books were being written. Ever since Harry Potter hit it big and made a two parter at the end Honestly, that made a ton of money. After three, every movie's had to have three sequels with a two parter in the end. Honestly, after three, I was really because Harry Potter stretched out the they won't stretch out the Battle of Hogwarts yeah. to make it more exciting for people because the Battle of Hogwarts in the book very short, like when very glanced book, over. But when it comes to yes. the uh, so that's why they did it for creative liberties. The, the other ones do it. Yeah. Cha ching. Just to get to the. One of the things that really just fucked, uh, pissed me off was that after book three, book three was basically the point where they said, "This is running, this is running way too long. We we have to shorten this down." Yeah. So they started taking out scenes here and there and here. And it's just, I, I read all the books from two to the last one, and I mean, it's just when I read that and I watched movies, it's just, where's this scene? Where's that? Where, where's this? Uh, especially yeah. with that uh, towards the ending, that forced romance with Ginny. That was more. <laughs> that was explained in the book so well, and it's just like. In the and the sixth movie or something or no, yeah uh, yeah the sixth movie or she starts crying for no reason because he kissed that girl is like and I think Cinema Sin said the best words like it's Ron Weasley why are you crying because <laughs> there's been no there's been no lead in there's been no nothing but um we're not here to talk about bad movie a good movie adapts we're gonna talk about bad ones like bad ones. That would fall into a number of things, like um, The Immortal Bones, um, yeah, a movie that nobody talks about anymore, uh, Maze Runner, uh, would fall into that one. Yeah. Well, what the hell is Maze Runner even about? Maze Runner is about these um, these people who are just, they get thrown. Did they have all this stuff, like this weird <laughs> robot spider thing? Yeah, here's the thing, it's like, it's about a bunch of kids that are thrown into like this cult or whatever, this like circled out village thing. And they're all just a bunch of teenagers, young adults, and they all. Of course. All, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's always teenagers. It's like, who was that else going to be? Toddlers? It's like. Fuck that. Yeah. Goo, 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 goo. yeah. <laughs> but, um. You got a brilliant plan. It's they all are trying to. Wall. They're all trapped in here. They can't get out unless they run through a maze. And to run through the maze is like near death sentence. But they have to do it because they believe and, in themselves or whatever. And probably, spoiler alert, but did you read the books? Why do they have to run through the maze? What's the point? Or if they even explained it in the first movie. They really did not explain because like, like, the whole now. thing they explained about it was like, there was this zo- it's like zombie apocalypse infection or whatever, and somehow these kids are like immune to it. Somehow they don't explain it. But why do they keep them in a maze? They don't tell you? They don't really tell you. Oh man, see that's stupid. They don't really tell you. Well, the funny you, part they, is, they find the bad, pe- the bad adults that are oh. Really white. Oh, another good one. No, a good example the of funniest, bad books to translation. The funniest part game. was just the fact that they did all this stuff trying to get out of the maze because they want to see the outside world. 
that's a world's a fucking barren wasteland for what they were showing. Yeah, so and fuck yes, that world. Inside that maze, or inside the area that they had to live, there was trees, there was fucking, they had a garden, they had wa- a fresh water supply. So I leave! It's, it's... Uh, I look for answers. Humanity can't be contained like that. It just can't. I know, that, it's, I know it's, that's, it's that's, that's the, the message that yeah. they're trying to poke at. It, it's it's, it's I can't Jurassic tell. Park life finds a way. I can't tell how big it is because of the fact that it just didn't really show it very well. But it looked like that lot was probably it was a, it it was some it was a circle, but it looked somewhere around I don't know a few kilometers wide. So oh, yeah, it was huge. I mean, it's not like you would just it's not like you lived in let's just say this fucking village and you just went okay, we're just gonna sit here and because in like the trailers and shit, it looks like a small circle. No, but like, it's big. no bigger than a football field. It is fairly. Well, big, the biggest though. problem is that it, it's it's all about how you uh it's all about your. Damn it, not position. Perception? Yeah, it's how you perceive it, because, I mean, it shows, like, the maze. It, it, the maze in the picture looks like it's only maybe three feet wide. Yeah. But the actual maze is, each, each corridor is around, what, 20 feet? Around. And it keeps, it's a multi-changing maze and everything, so. And if it's 20 feet wide, so it's really freaking big. And the whole thing, it's really weird that all of these movies have the same apocalyptic world style. The same damn style. And I'm tired of that. Like, all the teenagers look clean, but not too clean. Like, oh, see, uh, And all the, the the adults wear white if they're evil. And there's always a woman in charge. Like, evil woman in charge. Yeah. I don't know why. Unless it's Ender's Game where evil douches Harrison Ford. Yeah, a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> uh, another one that you guys got to watch is... Uh, I know... What are you guys are gonna say about the one hundred? Actually, just the what? The one hundred. The one hundred. Yeah. Uh, basically, it falls into similar tropes and stuff like that, but uh, it's definitely worth a, a fair shake, if anything, because season two just goes off all on its own and almost in a different direction, I'd say. Yeah. But just takes itself much more seriously and goes into hardcore sci-fi. Okay. But um, the basic premise is like after nuclear war. 97 years later, their humanity has basically been living in space stations for almost 100 years. And over time, the space stations have decayed and fallen apart and malfunctioned so much that after uh, 97 years, they've kind of formed one giant space station out of the, like, 12, I think there were before, and called it the Ark. And at this point in time, uh, they're going to run out of oxygen. It is inevitable. It is too late. Um aboard the Ark, or even just the stations before that, crime is punishable by death, and what they do is they float you out of an airlock. And um, <laughs> that's it. So you, you don't steal, you don't start you don't to do fight, shit. you don't do shit up there. You know what that so reminds me of? With um, 18 year olds, or anybody who's under 18, they just keep them locked up until their 18th birthday when they float them. Some of that stuff reminds me of the, <laughs> of the anime Blue Jin, or, like there's, a, there's one episode that they really go into this, where at the I don't really want to spoil this, but there's a se- section where they they have control of this station, where you, it gets to a point where like they say you can do whatever you want, just don't kill anybody, just don't steal anything, or you're done, and yeah. that's really it. And that really reminds me of what you're talking about. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Like, uh, what were we saying? I'm really sorry. What were we saying? Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember now. Okay. Um, so uh, the show basically. Um, they're running out of oxygen and all that stuff, so they have all these, you know, just under 18-year-old prisoners that instead of, you know, floating them and just killing them, they're going to drop them on Earth and see if it, it's survivable yet. Okay. And basically, it uh, it turns out it is survivable. There's uh, what they call grounders, which are just tribes that have uh, survived over time. And, uh, Do you speak English? Uh, uh, a, a little bit but not very much and uh, it, it explains in season two why some of them speak English and stuff like that but um, yeah they have their own language and it's really well done and um, yeah it's just it's really really good it goes into hardcore sci-fi territory and just becomes less of a watchable show more of like a, I gotta clear my schedule because that's on next week okay yeah it's good stuff it's really good stuff and um, I think since we're talking about bad book adaptions I think we can bring up the um, the recent Divergent series that because the se- the sequel has just come out yeah but I haven't seen it I have you seen it or I have not okay the books or and seen I don't think you've seen it so like that. the first one I did see and I've seen the trailers I can't say that it's a good series because it really 
again follows the, the same tropes that all these movies have been following for years now. Like it's becoming so cliche that I'm hoping one movie comes out and just smacks them all in the face. It's just like apocalypse movie. <laughs> and I know whatever the sequel to Insurgent is, they're gonna split that shit into two parts. We know this. Probably. This yeah. is a fact. And everybody knows that Hunger Games, it didn't need a part one and part two. We just needed Hunger Games three. Uh, well, wasn't the third book actually shorter than the yes. first two? <laughs> they, they're hobbiting this shit. So they're hobbiting this motherfucking shit. <laughs> you did not need a trilogy for those movies. You did not. I haven't even seen the third one. I heard it was we, so bad. We actually haven't either. So, like, I, 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 I like I liked, I liked Smaug though. Yeah, uh, the second one. No, Smaug 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 Dragon good. is awesome. Ugh. Like and they come back. Every every patch, yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, you guys still haven't seen Sherlock, have you? Oh uh, no. Honestly, when it comes Best to that TV, well, when it comes to the event to come back, all I can just say that one, is that one fucking scene in Star Trek is just, I am Khan. Oh, and it's like, like oh, I, I am obvious. Really I am obvious villain Khan. I just I hated it that like everybody knew he was Khan. Yeah. Like, and why just, did they deny it up until the movie's release date? It's like, come on. Like we knew it was Khan. I'm honestly, come right on. now I'm just kind of curious as like even on IMDb and the movie things, they didn't say Khan until day release. Honestly, and I'm just kind of curious what they're going to do in Star Trek uh, the, in the third one because they really wanted to bring back Leonard Nimoy and how and like and the whole thing with um, Abrams not doing it because he's doing Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, but like, I, I at least have high hopes for Star Wars. I'm really just wondering though what the hell they're going to do with that. I mean, I honestly think that they should leave it alone for a while or at least a couple of years. Yeah, because I'm honestly it was really interesting to have Larry Nimoy come back and just talk about like their version as to what happened. So yeah, uh, it's going to be a missed kind of uh, moment. Yeah, it's really it's so sad. sad that he died. Yeah. yeah, like I was just I looking up a tweet that he actually posted the last tweet. I read that to Ken and then it ran on the radio that he died. Oh. And that, and then they read that tweet on the radio. That was sad, man. Like the oh, whole man. world was I'm like dying. I went, oh, I put my phone down. I just thought for twenty minutes. I can't. I couldn't. Like it's like, no, nah, man. Yeah, because I mean, celebrities die all the time. Dude was like, hardly do they ever like make you think and like. But the dude was like what eighty four. Wow. Oh, yeah. So he lived a long he life. Six, too, so or like, seven, I think. Because he was like in his thirties when he was doing the original Star Trek. Yep. Um. But yeah. Well. <laughs> what? No. Nothing. Damn, man. I'm gonna put some water in my nose. Whoa. <laughs> Bad. What's the story? I mean, I was just asking what's been going on. Okay. Yeah, honestly, it really is sad that Leonard Nemo died. It really is. Like, sci-fi will not be the same without the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. When it comes to terrible book adaptions, I think I rank up Ender's Game. Of that, course. I was really fucking depressed about that. I'm really sorry to say that I never read the book, so I thought Ender's Game was fun. Oh, on. If I'm remembering this correctly, there's this just scene that I really wanted to see because at one point you, the he's, shoot is a moon fighting, scene, right? Yeah, they're fighting against this enemy ship that's on the other side of this small moon, and then they're just being swarmed all around. They can't do anything about it, and then Ender just goes, "Shoot through the moon!" and they just blast a fucking hole through the moon, <laughs> and they win, which is inaccurate for several reasons. <laughs> No, they had no, a, they they had a, it. They had a fucking no. giant they no, it. They had a giant fucking ship cannon, and along with all the small ships, they're just firing holes, breaking through this moon, and it it was just they dug yeah. all through and then fired at the enemy ship. Although I think they kind of made up for that scene that not happened with the final one where he just drilled those entire gunships through the hornet's nest, just yeah. into the planet and fired at it. Yeah, but I still just missed that moment. I, I was, yeah. Honestly, it's just like, and the whole fact that Ender was just like killing all those people without him knowing that he was killing all those people and how committed he was to winning that was yeah. that was a great no. whole scene that whole battle you know what the funniest part about that though was uh, a lot of people who read the book will actually say this well at least the ones that i've talked to but every fucking time i read that scene all i could imagine was just like an older an older kind of like a mac 2 style screen or it's just it like 
uh, with yeah. all these triangles. Like this. I, I couldn't picture what the hell it was going to look like. I never thought it would be a three-dimensional hologram. A giant like battle grid hologram where he could just pull screens in front of him and throw them away. And Yeah. It was supposed to have really good special effects. It had it great special effects. Like, it's just that... It was that whole, the whole starship battle sequence, amazing. It was yeah. kind of just depressing to me. Because like, I you need to see at least the drill scene where they're drilling through the nest with the guns. I'll probably watch it when they put it on Netflix. Yeah. Or you know what, I might already be on there. I thought you have it. Just that whole, like, gutting down, like... I thought you had it, though. Um, I probably do have it. Or do I? <laughs> I haven't seen it in forever, so... If not, it's on HBO and I'll catch it on there. But yeah, it's like just a whole... It's like, we're losing all the ships. Like, I don't care about the ships! They just fire away! Just boom, 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 and just... That was awesome. Yeah. I think the best... Uh, I'm pretty cool part of it. It's just that they did get the scene right over you just see the command, or the teacher, and he's watching... What the hell was that? Yeah, when he you lost the ship. sacrificed thousands of your men, and he's just like, but I want. And then you see... Now you see... You can stand down. He won the match. That's what's important here. And then you find out what ha- why he was so pissed off. And he's like, oh my yeah. god, really? Because in the movie, it wasn't really telegraphed that well why he was so mad. He didn't even get that mad. He was just like, kind of talking him down a little bit. So I didn't get it. So if he got a little more upset and the fact that got, all those people died. At least it had kind of a similar thing. I mean, it wasn't too bad. I mean, the, in the book, he was just fucking yeah. furious. Because he got Ben Kingsley to play that guy. So yeah. he could have been angrier. <laughs> Well, I kind of wonder if it was just supposed to be because the guy supposedly has a lot of suddenly switch into the Mandarin voice. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> I'm angry at you. Yeah, right. America. Be, be, be the real Mandarin. Don't yeah. be don't be actor Mandarin. Oh <laughs> man, I can't wait for that. He, it was just a really uh, in the book he was really pissed, but I think they were trying to say that he was that calm character who yeah you, you did fuck up and he wants to make it a point, but he's not going to be screaming at you. To, but I think in the book, it, it seemed more like he was literally just shouting, what the hell was that? Yeah, that's what kind of seemed like when you're telling it to me. Oh, man. I mean, he sat, every single one of those ships, not just had one pilot, it had a pilot and uh, the person working on the ship or maintaining the ship. So he was losing two men for every ship. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> what else we got going? There is, I really There's miss. a lot. We could talk about Fifty Shades of Shit. We could talk about Twilight, the obvious bad ones. Yeah. We could bring those they up. they split up the last book on that one, too? Yes, they did. Yeah, of course So we did. got four of those fuckers. Or was it four or five of those fuckers that happened? Instead of, and you know with Fifty Shades, they're going to split up the last one into two parts. And they're going to end the, and the, wait, they're gonna end the part one on a sex scene. A sex scene cliffhanger. They're going to end it with, like, her orgasm in here or something, and then it's going to go credits. <laughs> Smash, God. Because you know it's going to do... Uh, credits. <laughs> yeah. the finger strokes, right? Because, <laughs> like, like, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. With every, like, um, review I've heard of that movie, it's they just said it was terrible. Like, there was, there was, there was no development between the characters... The sex scenes are incredibly detailed and long. And even the leads aren't that charismatic. Yeah, exactly. Like, every single one I've heard, like, it's, just, it's worse than Twilight, which it's hard to believe. A little bit. Honestly. My sister saw it, though, and she said she loves it. She liked the movie. Oh, yeah, my little brother saw it, and he said he thought it was really good, too. You know why? Sex scenes. With your brother, it's got to be the sex scenes. But with my sister... She read the books. She really liked the books. And brother, what's funny is her friend I don't hates understand. the books. What's the point of this movie or those books? Is there a terrorist plot? No. But like, is, it's there, just, is there aliens? It's just, no. You know what it is? It's, <laughs> it's like, like these two people, they kind of want to date each other. They sh- it's nine and a half weeks with more porn. Honestly, it's, <laughs> it's nine and a half weeks with porn. <laughs> I, well, I just it took funny. me a second, guys. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Yeah, we were making roar. So before he had the fugly face. <laughs> I know, oh my god! Funny though, when you talk about before those. he got hit with a frying pan. Yeah, when you talk about those uh, type of movies. I think it's just funny where uh, this newspaper uh, article writer actually talked about how he decided with his wife uh, they're going to go try all the stuff. Fifty Shades Great. Yeah, and it's a lot of it's just basic stuff like BDSM but I mean it was all just basic stuff explained in a way that you think it's great but yep. it's 
Just they should have been just like drowning each other in toilet bowls. See, that's another funny thing. Like um, setting firecrackers off on each other's genitalia. Even when people said that when it was happening, it wasn't even that interesting. So what was the point? There's just no, there's there's no, there's no, there's no no steam. There's and the fact that the movie was so adamant to rip off Twilight in every sense they could, just because the book was Twilight fan fiction turned into a novel. Yeah. It just it had to do it. It, It's like what if Bella and Edward got super naughty and. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because you know the author, she admitted it anyway, so. Yeah, yeah I think the best part about that was just when I was reading it. When you're a millionaire, you got nothing to lose. I just love that one part where, uh, there's this comic that I read a while back where it just shows Bella and Edward, and it's just one of those CG, or uh, the Photoshop one, and it just says, like, it's Bella asking him, he, he's a vampire, so he has, his heart doesn't beat, yep, his blood's move, yep, so how's he get an erection? Oh yeah, um, you showed me that one. Um, I think like the funniest thing might have been foreshadowing for um, Fifty Shades. Like there was a scene in the movie called Vampire Suck. It's a, it's a terrible parody movie, the Twilight movie. It's yeah, bad. I remember that coming out. Yeah. Okay, and there was a scene where fake Bella got was like, okay, I'm gonna get it on with with fucking Edward or whatever, and she's wearing BDSM clothes. Yeah, and I'm like that. Is foreshadowing something evil. Yeah. And it, the Fifty Shades have like, yo, you're the devil spot of this. Yeah. And even like my coworkers oh my I've God, worked with, there's this thing. It's always women who find this really, I don't know what vagina pandering thing this is. Vagina, vagina pandering. It's, this, <laughs> this is that the women find this so appealing. I'm really sorry, but I don't see the appeal. It's just like rom coms, man. They're just like that's the that's the target audience. But then again. I can understand. You know what? It's a vagina movie. It's a vagina movie where we it's have a pussy flick. Where 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 Pacific Rim's a dick flick. But um, <laughs> uh, so have you guys ever heard of a website called Ideas? No. Ken, I know you'll love this at some point. Um, it's basically just really stoned people just go on this website and post whatever that's on their mind, basically, or whatever good ideas they have. This one was a remake for Twilight, and it's, ah, uh, yeah, uh, they get together. That's the first movie. And uh, then in the second movie, it starts out with Edward smoking a joint. He gets hungry, kills Bella in the end. It's like, yeah, it's like, gets the munchies by my Bella. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, that's the best munchies ever. <laughs> ten, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten, man. Right? Isn't that the best? I would give that movie a standing ovation. It's like, I, uh, ah, I'm dead. We got time, I think, to blow through the last section, okay, which is, got? what have you seen? Ooh, no. And then we got to stop the, this episode of the podcast. Yeah. What have you seen? So Next week will be games and stuff. Since apparently we can only get through one category. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's good. We've been talking about this for a while. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, what have you seen? Which is like, if you, what movies have you seen recently? Could be theaters, could be on Netflix, whatever. So, uh, who wants to go first? All right, I nominate Chance. Not a chance. You're nominated, bitch. I haven't seen that many new movies recently. Um, okay. I've seen any new movies recently. I've been watching a lot of TV shows the past couple weeks. Okay, then my turn. That's all my I got. Turn. Yep, okay, what'd you, what'd you see? Okay, uh, last uh, Sunday, I think I was, or Saturday, I went out to go see Kingsman. Um, That's what I wanted to see. Yeah, okay, how was it? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Oh, my God. Like, I, no, King- no, no spoilers, because okay. I really want to see it. Like, for you guys don't know, Kingsman is kind of a, an homage slash parody-ish movie of the James Bond, Jack Bauer, all those spy movies. And it is really good. It stars Colin Firth and, um, and a few other and Sam Jackson and a few other actors. It's like, have you ever seen any movie ever? He's the black guy. Yeah, yeah. it's like, it's like um, Ted Two trailer reference. Um, and it's a really good movie about this um, spy who he did, killed in action, but his son actually grows up and somehow through a series of circumstances ends up joining in the elite and trying and training to become a spy. All the while, Sam Jackson's plotting his evil thing to... Because he's Samuel L. Goddamn Jackson. What's funny about this movie is he talks with a lisp. He talks like this all the time through the goddamn movie. And oh, so when awesome. he's when he's cursing out and yelling, he's like, I don't want to kill that motherfucker. I love that guy out there. I'm oh, like, that's good stuff. I'm like, oh my God, Sam, you're going to make me laugh. Like, and everybody, an old, like an old black man with a lisp. Everybody in the theater was cracking up. Oh, like awesome. just Of how he was talking, like... Just, it, gets, it gets all the tropes right, first of all. Like, it just makes you think of that RoboCop scene at the very end where he's just like, ah, then this pile of horseshit. Yeah, and um, there's one scene, like, if you didn't think Colin Firth could kick ass in a movie, you watch Kingsman, Colin Firth will kick ass in this yeah, movie. Yeah, I've like, seen some of the cinematography and like, stuff. 
Like the church scene in this movie just nonstop ass kicking for like five minutes. Yeah, it's pretty. It, it looks dope. Yeah, it's choreography. Does, there's a great build up and everything, and the whole spy training in between the villain build up and the final conflict with Sam Jackson was great. Like, um, I definitely recommend you check it out as, as soon as possible. Like, I'll check it out with you again if you want. Yeah, sure. Um, it's playing at Sharky next Man. week. There's even a, like a really funny ending to the movie where it's like. It kind of is a nod to the James Bond flicks, and at the same time, you're like, I can't believe they actually kind of did that. The Kingsman will be back. <laughs> they probably will. I'm hoping there's a sequel. Like, uh, I, yeah, I hope so as well. I'm trying to remember who, who directed that movie. Yeah, I can't remember, but like, I, one thing that was kind of really out there, everybody's British accent was really thick. Yeah. And they they, they, they use a lot of British uh, ling, Britishism. lingo. Britishisms. Yeah, Britishisms. Wow, we've been here for about a month. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's been out for a while. Oh, sure. I gotta go check that out. It's the movie's been time. kicking ass, though. So it'll be out for a while. But I want to go see it at Sharky. Yeah. Yeah. We do apologize for the multiple jump cuts in this podcast. His fault. My fault. Yeah, it was your fault. Yeah. So, if anybody doesn't have anything else um, about the what you've seen, I think we got to cut the podcast here. I've mostly been watching anime and some few anime movies. I guess that'll be uh, I guess that'll be for the anime section later. Yeah, next time. Next time, we either go we'll, into we'll go we'll either go into about anime and manga, and he won't know what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> either next week, we're going in on interesting conversation. We'll be going into either video games or anime. Or both. Or both! Who knows? Or about terrible terrible voice acting. Or about, hell, even terrible timing for the voices inside of games. So, remember to stay tuned and wait for our next episode, because we don't know when the hell we're going to put it out. Next time on It's an Interesting Conversation.